Yes, you're muted, Amy. Hello, is the meeting started? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Mike's here. <laughs> and my audio works, I'm assuming. That yes, sounds great. It does. Yeah. It does today. All right. We remain hopeful. Well, we got five. We do. The only one that I think uh, I haven't heard from is Chip. We know uh, Greg and Tom have conflicts. Um, <clears throat> he's, look, he's looking for his wife to turn on his on his computer. Now, now. <laughs> Don't make fun. <laughs> My four-year-old helps. Amy, would you mind texting Chip and see if he's on his way as our board clerk? I know he's going to he's going to want to participate in this first hearing. That's why I was. Appreciate everyone's patience. We'll get started in a moment. We're just confirming the status of one other board member. Oh, the press arrived. Now I'm trying to remember, did Chip tell us he wasn't going to be at this meeting for some reason? I'm trying to remember our last meeting. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, Probably. I don't I don't think he told us that. Okay. Probably stuck on 128. Yeah. Could be. Um, I don't have it written down anywhere, so. Yeah. Yeah, we hadn't planned on, you know, adjusting the uh, agenda in any way, but I, I know, you know, I mean, he can always catch up on this one, but uh, and watch the recording, but we may just have to get started. It's already five after. No response, Amy? Turn your volume on, Amy. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Texture. 
Go, Mike. Want to try rejoining? Or I don't know, there's a button on your keypad that overrode the Zoom meeting. So she wants to know how to turn it on. There is a button on her uh, keyboard that will turn that. Mine is F1, but that's, you know, I have a okay. think that. Yeah, looks like mine is too. That, that uh, would override the Zoom mute setting. But we heard you initially, Amy. I don't know what happened. Okay, looks like she's going to reboot here. All right, we'll just wait for her to get back and then we'll get started. Looks like she's struggling with her connection here. <laughs> she says, hang on. Mm -hmm. She was able to log in from Aruba. <laughs> yeah, maybe she should go back. Yeah, she has the legal notice. She does. Okay. Um, yeah. I sent her the number because uh, she seemed to not be going through originally. Can't hear you. Nope. Say something. I need to see you. We can see you. Can't hear you. Uh... Oh, now it's coming. That's it. All right. Now. Can you hear me? Ooh. Yes. Yeah. We can hear you now. Okay. Don't know. Don't know what happened, but. For some reason my microphone was shut off. Okay. Technical training. What? I did a technical training. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, so Chip said that to start without him that he was trying to get on. Okay. I told you I needed his wife. 
<laughs> okay, we will uh, begin. Good evening and welcome to the Town of Wakefield Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, September 9th, uh, 2020. Um, I will, let's begin with a reading of the legal notice by our board clerk, Amy. Consistent with the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and banning gatherings of more than 10 people, this meeting will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. The public may not physically attend this meeting, but every effort will be made to allow the public to view and or listen to the meeting in real time. Persons who wish to do so are invited to click on the following link. If you do not have a camera or microphone on your computer, you may use the following dial-in number, 1301-715-8592, meeting ID 897-7743-5574. Please only use a dial-in or computer and not both as audio feedback will distort the meeting. This meeting will be audio and video recorded. 121-8, Henry and Marie Rage. Um, application for a variance under Article 9, Section 190-34 and Table 2 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaws to remove an existing deck and replace it with a new screened porch uh, with a gabled roof. The property is shown as map 40C, lot parcel 036 of the assessor's map and is located at 25 Montclair Ave. Two, 21-9, 249 Nahant Street Realty Trust. The application for a variance under Article 10, Section 190-60 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, seeking a variance of requirements of Article 6 and Table 2 of said bylaw, including lot frontage, lot width, side yard setback, rear yard setback, and Section 190-31K of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to maintain and or create two separate legal laws with an existing single family dwelling on the lot shown as 251 Nahant Street. The property is shown as map 32, lot parcel 63A of the assessor's map and is located at 249 Nahant Street. 321-10, Studio Realty Trust, application for a variance under Article 10, Section 190-66 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, seeking a variance from the requirements of Article 6 and Table 2 of said bylaw, including lot frontage, lot width, and lot area to maintain and or create two separate legal lots with the existing single family dwelling remaining on the lot, shown as 249 Nahant Street, and a new single family dwelling on the lot, shown as 251 Nahant Street. The property is shown as map 32, lot parcel 63B on the assessor's map, and is located at 251 Nahant Street, Board of Appeals. Thank you, Gail. I'm Amy. I mean, sorry, Amy. I was looking at a list of names. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, we will also now take uh, roll call attendance uh, of board members. Uh, Amy. Here. Jim McBain. Here. Chip Tarbell. Here. Joe Pride. Here. Mike Feely. Here. And Tom Lucy and Greg McIntosh are excused. They uh, let us know in advance they had a previous business commitment. Um, just a few reminders for anyone um, who has not joined one of these town meetings via Zoom before, just to set expectations. We have muted everyone who's not participating in an ongoing hearing or discussion um, temporarily. Um, we would ask that everyone uh, who does present uh, material uh, to the board tonight, share their video and audio in the meeting room as you would during a regular public hearing. Uh, if there's technical limitations, we'll try to share anything that we may have a copy of. Uh, I have a copy of all the official files as chair and other board members have copies of their of the files and applications themselves. Uh, we would ask all applicants, they'll present their testimony and information to the board. They'll share their screen with any materials that they have. Board members will offer comments and questions. Uh, the chair will read any written correspondence provided by other town boards or, or the public in, in our files. And when we're done, then the public will be welcome to speak and we'll ask I will ask you to raise your hand there's a button to do that in the zoom uh, room uh, if that fails for some reason and your audio videos on you can sort of wave your hand um, but one way or another we will call on you we will ask you to state your name and address for the record uh, <clears throat> before offering any comments if there are any votes taken this evening they will be done by a roll call vote in the normal fashion of a motion a second any discussion 
and then a roll call by the members as we just did with attendance. Okay, so thank you for that. And with that, our first hearing is actually a continued hearing Cases 21-4, 21-5, and 21-6. Granite's Family Trust, LLC, at 581 and 583 Salem Street. May I, may I Mr. Chair? Yes. Oh, Welcome, great. Brian. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail, representing Granite's uh, Family Trust, LLC. Uh, with us tonight on behalf of Granites are Bill Mandel and Jim Cook. Uh, they're both on the screen here. Uh, also, uh, John Ogren is here, who is our site civil. Andy Zawiski is, Andy, are you here? Yes, he is, right below me, um, who is our architect. And also Jim Emanuel, our landscape architect, uh, is here tonight. Um, we had our initial hearing on this, um, as you're aware, at your last meeting. Um, and we gave a, a introduction of this project, pretty pretty detailed in nature. Um, and we um, the board set kind of an agenda going forward on this. Um, and what was discussed was tonight that we would uh, go over architecture, um, landscaping, some site civil aspects, and uh, also the board had asked us to uh, prepare a context plan. Uh, kind of comparing some heights in the area uh, to what uh, we're proposing. So we're, we're prepared to address all of those. I don't know, um, I guess um, it's up to the board. Which of those would you uh, like to hear first? Would you um, maybe want to see the context plan before the architectural plan? Would that be helpful? That would make sense. That's what I figured, okay. okay. So can I, may I dare ask the ability to uh, share the screen? You should be able to. Oh, it always becomes an adventure. You should have the share screen option. I did oh, I set that I setting to allow okay. participants to share. Okay, hang on a second. Let me see. All right. I'm going to try. All right, so you guys see this? Yep. Okay, so these are all my attachments. So this, hopefully this will work. Uh, context. Here we go. Can you guys see that? No. All right, hang on. Now? Yeah. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but there you go. So thank you, thanks for your patience. Um, so this, um, uh, uh, in conjunction with Mr. Ogren uh, and uh, Mr. Zaweski, we uh, put together, and Andy, I'm sorry to continually mispronounce your name. I'm just not very good at it. So I, my apologies. Um, uh, they put together this, um, this plan to kind of give the board an idea of, of heights in the area. Um, and John, can I kind of hand this over to you because you put it together? Would you mind? Um... Could, could we zoom, zoom in? Uh, yeah, we're trying to do that. Right. Hang on, Jim. There we go. Better. Is that better? Yep. Not cool. great, but better. A little bigger you want it? I think I'm going to go off of my screen if I go any bigger. Well, you'll go off mine too. Yeah, that's as big as I can get it. So... John, do you mind um, orienting the board for what we have here and how you went about this, please? Yeah, no problem. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. 
um, yeah, so we went out and um, surveyed. We got uh, elevations of what we kind of estimated to be kind of the average grade on these buildings, and then got a, and also got the elevation of um, the roof on all the surrounding buildings. Um, if you kind of look around, it varies. Obviously, it's from 25 feet up to uh, 48 feet in height for the building. Uh, probably the ones most notable is uh, across the street from this site uh, at 580 Salem Street. Uh, that roof line, and we got a shot on the actual roof line. You can see there's some additional height um, and some architectural features above that, but the roof line was 48 feet and our proposed building, again, across the street, uh, we're calling out that it's gonna be 49.1 feet. So it's very comparable to what's across the street. Uh, the other one that's kind of interesting is there's a multifamily kind of behind the site over to the east, uh, 589, uh, that one, that one. 39 feet, feet. Right there. Right there. that's almost 40 that's feet. almost 40 feet um, um essentially it essentially I, it if anyone has any questions about um the actual heights and what we collected out there no i think this answers the question that the board had yeah, and I think Thank Tom you. is one that rings. Unfortunately, he's not here tonight, but he'll see it. Um, I'm sure he got the email. But uh, how does that 589 access their site? Do they go out to the right there, or they come through this site? I don't. I, I don't recall seeing that when I've driven by. Access to which site? 589 in the rear uh, there. There's kind of a driveway. That driveway right, right there. there. It's actually a right away that um, you know on paper anyway. It's pretty much all paved in that area. Um, but they can come in just to the right of 581, 583, and um, come up through the driveway there, and then that's how they access to get to the back. Like where the black line is for your property? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, okay. I just I saw the tree line, but I don't remember seeing their access. Okay, so there's no... Like I said, it's pretty much all pavement out there, so it's not, it's not a defined driveway. Right, but there's nothing that needs to be considered as part of this project. Like the, I remember we did the Dunkin' Donuts down the street and there's a residence or two out back and that had to be considered, right? There's a road, an access road. So they you know, the accommodation, yeah. The access is on right away on the abutting property. Got it, okay, thanks, John. So, uh, so as you go down the street, because there's some changes that are on the, on the Linfield side of things, um, you've got office buildings down there that are two and three stories, and then the elderly project is what four? Does anybody remember? Ben Rice. Yeah, I think so. I think it might be three, but I should know. I drive by it every day. <laughs> it's um, it's three. That doesn't include the peak, obviously. But it is three. So you're going, you know, the, the neighborhood's changing in a, in a way because what were used to be a lot of houses now are turning into apartments or businesses because you've got office spaces down there, which I think are two, two and three floors as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's sort of the same gangly thing that's happened. Plus what you don't see on the street is the apartment complex that's in the back of the uh, old rental agency back there, which is probably three stories as well. Okay. Is the board all done with this, Mr. Chair? <clears throat> yeah. Any other, any other questions, board members? Hearing none, it sounds like we're good for now. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Andy, I'm going to move on to architecture. Do you want your architectural plans to start or your material book? Um, 
I think we went through the architectural plans pretty well the last time. Uh, most of the questions were about the materials. So why don't we put the well, material? Maybe, maybe we can just show the building. The rendering. Yeah, let me just let me just show the uh, let me just show the elevation because I, I don't think uh, Amy was at the meeting. Um, so. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I just wanted to refresh the board's memory of um, the elevation uh, prior to um, to going to materials, and I I, I didn't know if um, if the board had any um, questions on the uh, or, or uh, comments on the uh, on the elevations before we went to materials. Just kind of scrolling through them. Brian, did you have the layout on there? Uh, we'd have to go back to a different drawing. Ah, okay. All Which right, way? The site plan, Amy? The site plan, yeah. Oh, you want the site plan, Amy? Yeah. You got it. Hold on. Thank okay. you. Oh, hold on. Okay. And share. Oh, that's a landscape plan. Sorry about that. Just bear with me for a sec. There you go. You see that? Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, the, okay. It starts with the locust plan. I think that shows the the neighborhood. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Do you want uh, John to go through this, Amy? I just wanted to see because I, I missed it obviously last time. Just how yeah. where the building was going to be on the on the plot and just Got see. It. Yeah. Okay. Let me get yeah. to that sheet for you. Thank uh, you. Hang on. Okay. And then there you go. Right there. Okay. Okay, this is the proposed site plan. Um, the driveway comes in to the left, to the west of the building. And we went to a lot of effort to get as much parking as we could behind the building so that the building really creates the street front. And we did in, in propose um, some brick structure, which extension the build, building materials uh, to form a gateway, again, to soften the view to the parking. It, it won't be invisible, but I think it won't be prominent either. That was our attempt. Um, the other significant feature to me, if you look at the upper part of the drawing, you see a shaded double line. That's actually a retaining wall that was built for the railroad back in uh, 1850. And right now, most of it's behind the existing building. We're going to actually expose that, and that's going to be a feature that, that you'll see very prominently at the back of the parking. And it, it's actually quite nice, a beautiful stone wall with an iron rail on top, and it's in excellent condition considering how, how old it is. And then on the right side, the trees that are shown, those are existing trees, so it really forms already a buffer that we will maintain. We're not trying to plant little trees and hope they grow. Those are those are mature trees that are already there. So the back edges of the site, I find really, really nice and, and a nice edge. Um, to the left, we're gonna put a fence. Uh, the electric power company has a lot of stored materials outside and things, not very visually pleasing, but uh, we will put a fence along that side and the land does rise. You can see some grades indicated at that upper left corner. There is a natural rise to the land so that for our residents that the uh, view toward that side won't be very, very strong. And then on the right side, you can see that right away that, uh, that, that John talked about and that's the access to that neighboring uh, multifamily building. Uh, the entrances to the building, there's one on the left, which goes to that parking area. 
And there's one on the back which serves that parking area. You can see the handicapped spaces are right near the entrance. And when you go inside the building there, the elevator is right in there. So I, I really like the flow. I think it's, uh, it's very, very good for the residents of the building. And Amy, if you have, a, you have other questions. Sounds good, thank you. Okay. You, you ready for the materials, Tom? Yeah. Okay. I, the one thing we should mention the is, the should parking, is the parking uh, does meet the uh, ratio. Uh, am I correct on that, Brian? Yes. It yep. meets the required zoning ratio. We're not looking for relief. I, I thought the notice indicated we were looking for relief on that, but that- Well, there's, there's other aspects of it that okay. we'll get into on the site. Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay, okay. Well, hopefully this will page. Yeah, um, it will. When you tell me, when you tell me what you want to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a heads up there. Okay. Again, the features that I spoke about, you can see the entrance to the building on the left end. Uh, you can see the, the, the short walls that extend out from the building to give it a gateway feature. Um, again, I'm, I'm a railroad nut, so that retaining wall in the back is, uh, is really important to me. I was really happy to see a feature like that. It's a nice historical piece. And in addition to the retaining wall, it holds back the soil. So those trees are, are up high. It really, uh, considering that what's behind us is a storage yard for the power company and Route 128, we've actually got a very nice attractive visual buffer behind our building. And then you can see to the uh, to the right, the lower existing um, residential structure, it's multifamily. And then you can see the sidewalk, which we put in the rendering that we're hoping for. That's not on our property. That would be on the town property, but it would be really nice if, if somehow that comes into into being that's wishful thinking at this point but we have some space between the sidewalk and the building to do some very nice landscaping and uh, i think the building presents itself one thing i would like to mention about the height was our 49 feet goes to the uppermost point of the architectural parapets where the 48 feet on the building cross street goes to the flat roof so um Really, that building's a little bit taller than ours. Not not much. We're we're similar in scale, four stories. Um, okay, can go to the next slide. Okay, the windows. Um, we like to use a Geldwin product. It's a V twenty five hundred series. Uh, the black color. The windows themselves are one over one, uh, but we are proposing some small. Uh, muntins in the uh, in the transoms and those would be permanently attached to the outside so it gives a very subtle texture but uh, we're not looking at a colonial feel we're really trying to get a more a more modern feel to the building and of course energy star everything is built to the to the current energy codes and and beyond the next slide please Okay, there are some awning windows. The arrow points them out. Um, these also would be Geldwin. Uh, it does say on here classic series. I, I think I made a mistake. I think it's also the V2500 series. They would match the same profile and the same colors as the uh, double hung windows. And they would be operable awning windows. Uh, next slide. Uh, sliding doors. Uh, the same V2500 series, um, they would be single single light doors, um, again with the gelled ones so that we would be colored match to the windows. The next slide. The fiber cement siding, the upper part, it's the lighter color in the rendering is a board and batten pattern. Um, this is shown as the hardy product. I know there are some other manufacturers of fiber cement, but Hardy is probably the, the early uh, starter of that. Uh, it's a vertical board and batten. Um, 
I don't know if I used the right term. I said eight inches to the weather. They're actually eight inch wide boards. Eight inch to the weather usually refers to clapboards, but these would be a vertical board and batten. Um, they are pre-finished by, uh, by the manufacturer. Uh, the color chosen is the Arctic white and it is a smooth texture. And next slide. The lower part, the siding is a horizontal clapboard siding. Again, we go to the wider, wider clapboards. I'm, I've actually done some eight inch to the weather. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get that. Uh, factory finished in a pearl gray, smooth texture. Um, it's a, a lap siding, but by going to the wider look, again, we're trying to get a little more contemporary feel. Not the, the picture at the top is just a sample of material. It's more of a traditional look, but what we're proposing is a little bit wider look on the on the clapboards. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the brick is, um, it's a Belden product. It's a gray color velour finish, very smooth finish. Uh, what we're looking at is using a Norman size. The Norman size brick is a longer brick. The one in the picture is a is a traditional eight inch brick, but the Norman size is actually an 11 inch brick. And again, we're proposing to lay it in a one third bond, which is a little different from the sample picture. That's a one half bond where the the longer brick with the one third bond is, is gonna give us a little bit more stylized look um, it's, I think it's an interesting traditional material. It's very compatible with the other buildings around. There's a lot of brick in the neighborhood, but the color and the texture, we get some variety in the grays, but sticking more to the gray colors rather than the reds and the browns that the neighbors have. So, uh, we're not trying to match the neighbors. We're trying to be a good neighbor, but have, have our own personality. Um, this is a, a grade SW brick, severe weather. Um, the testing, the C216 is really the color fastness. Uh, the FBX is interesting. This particular brick is a higher grade in the sense that there's very little variation from batch to batch. The FBX is a, is a higher grade in the color. So you really get a lot of uniformity Sometimes you really got to be careful of bricks where the each batch will have a little different color, but uh, But Andy on, on this on what you show here, this seems to be a, a variation from a darker to a lighter and in between. Yes, yes, I mean, there's at least four different shades in there, but there's not a lot of range between the shades. And we're looking at a light gray mortar, we try to stay away from the warmer tones and go to a go to a colder gray mortar. I don't have a sample of that. Now, my concern was when you started to talk, there was little range. I'm looking at something that's got a fairly decent range and I think pulls off what you're trying to do as opposed to something that would be one solid color. Very much, very much, yes. All right. Actually in the rendering, it does represent a brick with, with range. I, I will say the one in the rendering is a very expensive brick from Utah, but the Belden is a more local, comes from Ohio. Um, it's available. Um, I really wanted to, to pick something that's, that's practical. All right, the next slide, please. Uh, the trim, we are proposing to use the AZEC um, and use the natural color. These, they've done this on other projects, uh, color, coordinated uh, fasteners and everything. Um, but we do want to use a full uh, five quarter actual one inch thick so that, especially what I find with the cement siding, the hardy siding, the clapboards aren't tapered like a traditional clapboard. They're, they're full width all the way. And by using the five quarter trim, generally it will stand out beyond, you don't get the, the tips of the clapboards protruding and uh, it's it's a very flexible product. We can use it for the specialty trim items up near the, the top of the building as well. The next slide. 
The deck rails, um, I've had some real excitement using stretched horizontal cable rails, trying to maintain the, the four inch spacing and all that. What we're proposing on this is a, it's a wild hog is the brand name. It's a four by four black powder coated mesh. Um, and it really, I think gives it a little bit different look, but a very nice look. Uh, the frame is powder coated aluminum and we can get either the Benjamin Moore or the Sherwin Williams colors, which would tie in with the, with the raw color of the AZEC trim so that the rails would be different material, but they would be color coordinated with the AZEC. And the rendering, I can't really see it here, but the rendering does have that mesh pattern in the, uh, in the rendering. Okay, uh, next please. And then there are some pieces primarily at the entries where we will use a little bit of metal um, for the, uh, the protective uh, awning. And these I'd like to use a different color to, to call more attention to the entry so that it wouldn't blend in, want to stand out a bit. Um, we're using either a gauntlet gray or slate gray depending on, on the availability, but it's an aluminum aluminum panel for those entry canopies. And the other kind of lack of clutter is realistic on the rendering. We don't propose gutters or drown spouts. We will use uh, roof drains. There will be some scuppers on the back of the building in case the roof drains get plugged and everything, but uh, no uh, rain leaders coming down the face of the building. Next slide, please. Uh, the entry door, we like to use a uh, con ear. It's a, it's a commercial door. It stands up to, to wear and tear and doesn't get out of adjustment. And again, it's a little different from the other materials um, to different manufacturers. So even though it's black, it'll probably have a slightly different shade. But in the entry, having a little difference uh, really, I think, is a good thing. Uh, full glazed doors, commercial grade, heavy styles, um, a door that we've used on other projects and they, they've held up very well. Uh, next slide. Now uh, the bathroom vents, that is a potential source of, of visual clutter on the outside of the building. Uh, what we did actually in our building on Main Street, the upper floor, we can go through the roof and that'll be behind the parapet so they won't be visible. Um, to go up through the roof from the lower floors, you get too much run, too much back pressure on the ducts. So we do go through the side of the building, but what we've been able to do is go into the deck and then go down so that it's not coming through the siding. So it really disappears. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the dryer vents, um, they do have to run, we got to be very careful with the number of elbows and things. They do have to come out horizontally through the wall. But again, we're going to put them on the side walls near the deck rather than the prominent wall that faces the street. And these would be manufactured color matched. Uh, we'll give them samples of the siding so that they can match the siding. Um, I don't think they're going to be highly visible at all. Uh, we've also picked the style event, which is which is very plain, doesn't have a lot of uh, texture to it. Um, we're really doing what we can. We need a good performing building that needs to breathe through the walls, but we're taking a lot of care to put the put the places where the where the vents are in non-prominent positions. If you're uh, standing on those uh, decks, is that going to bother people? Like the smell? Well, the it's typically their deck and their dryer. I don't know. I My dryer blows into my backyard next to where I sit. I, I, I guess well, I I'm talking about, yeah, about the, that. the bathroom vent, though, also. The bathroom vents will be yeah. will be exhausting out there. Um, generally, the bathroom vents are mostly to, to provide airflow in the building. I mean, yeah. I, I suppose there might be an occasion where it's not too pleasant, but I, I haven't heard of complaints 
the only real complaints I ever hear is people that hear their neighbor's TV or something. We really want to be super careful with giving sound control from unit to unit. But uh, uh, these things uh, we've done on other projects, I've never really had no. any pushback. All right, I'll just ask. All right, next slide. All right, the deck lights, uh, the upper decks where there's no, they're open to the sky, we use a, a very modern, simple can light. Now, even though it's capable of going up and down, these would only be shining down on the deck. We don't want to have a lot of stray light into the sky. Um, the lower decks that have decks up above, we use a, a six inch diameter uh, down light. Um, again, so that it is directed down at the deck and, and not off the building. Really don't want the building to provide spill light. We've, we've already submitted a photometrics on our site lighting where we have to control it. We have to provide enough light for safety purposes, but control it to keep it from spilling. And we don't want the lighting on the building to add to that, to that uh, clutter or or even uh, up to the sky. Okay, next slide. I think we're there. There we go. Okay, those are the major materials that I, I think are are prominent on the building. And uh, I really tried hard to research materials that are that are affordable and manageable, that are durable for the life of the building, and that uh, complement the the style that we're trying to achieve. Do you know what type of heating system you're going to use yet? Uh, at this point, we're we're looking at the mini splits, and they would be roof mounted. Um, there is a parapet. Um, I know the question is always, if you have stuff on the roof, who's going to hear it? Um, I find the mini splits, um, and there is one right outside here where I'm sitting. And one day, I was I could see the bushes moving. I thought there was an animal there, and I realized the compressor was running, I couldn't hear a thing. They are pretty quiet. Um, and because they will be behind the parapet out of line of sight, I don't think you're going to get any any real sound to the neighbors at all. So this is very thorough, I think, um, and sort of what we expect to see. Um, I would ask, though, in the near future, I'd like to see some schematic detail as to um, differential, like at the corner, corner to corner, how what the size of the boarding is around the windows, towards the top where the cornice is, and that sort of stuff. Just an outline more than anything else, but information and obviously thought about it, so you, it's pretty easy to provide. You have also two parapet levels, so some idea as to the parapet levels in relationship to, to the roof line. I don't know whether those ones on the corner stick up, you know, just above the roof and the ones that are in between um, and set back, whether that's at the roof line or whether they're sticking up above the roof line some. Uh, Jim, the ones at the corners are the highest, the four corners. Well, how high? And then the other ones are the medium and the right over the decks, you can actually see just the, the edge of the roof line. Yeah, um, I, there may be a very small pair of a couple inches to keep contain the uh, roof drainage, but uh, that's pretty much the roof line. All right. I'd like some more information on that. Plus, like I say, um, some of the transitional details from material to material, like from the stone to the to the clapboard system, basically from the clapboard system to the board and batten to the parapet information basically is the profile of that thing. So we have a clear um, understanding of uh, what this thing actually is. I mean, it looks good, but I just make sure we want to get ourselves committed to something that basically corresponds to what you're showing. Okay, I'll take the, the other architectural drawings a little bit farther and I'll have all that information right on there. Yeah, okay, thank you. Is there a chance that we can set something up to um to see the materials. Uh, do you, you want samples? Again, with the Zoom meeting, I wasn't sure how to do that. Is it 
do we leave them at the town hall where you can go visit or how, how do yeah. you do a sample board? Yeah, that's probably best is just leave it um, with Gail basically somewhere there. I'm sure she can find an empty corner. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and, uh, you know, we can go down and visit um, to see what the material is and just put a label on it so we know what it is. Okay, I will put that together. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a, another question too. The um, the lighting that you were saying on the outside, I noticed the color was a bronze color, but all the other um, outdoor, like the door and the around the um, the patios, is black. Is there a reason that they're different colors? Um, well, probably the reason is those are the pictures I could find. But I, both of those fixtures, I believe, are. I know the the upper can one that's more prominent is available in black. Um, I've got to do a little research on the flush mounted one. Uh, I will hopefully be able to get it in black. The, okay. the can one is definitely available in black. Okay, I just think it would be a little more uniform if it was kind of all the same colors there instead yeah. of an afterthought. That is our intent, yes. Okay. Do you have elevations of the other sides of the building yet? That you uh, they were submitted in the architectural plan, the flat elevations of all four sides, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you could show them again, in case. Okay. Do, do I bring that up, Brian? Yep, just give me a second. Um, here we go, right here. Stop share. Share. Here we go. Keep going, Andy. Yeah, they're down, there they are. There's the front, that's the one that's in the rendering. You can see the three different parapet levels there. Blow it up, Brian. Oh, sorry. Make it a little bigger. Please, thank you. <laughs> we'll get you get bigger. Well, a little bit more. There we go. If you can move it around, we're perfect. Yeah, you can see the textures better. Okay, so that's the side that's in the rendering. Now, if you move up to the next drawing. Let's move it all over. Perfect. All right, that's the left side again that's in the rendering. You can see the entry door. And, and those then, awning windows, are they the awning windows? Or would they be located in a what's what's behind those? Is that like a living room or? Yeah. Um, I know it's a furniture wall. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the drawing. There was a nice reason oh, for plan. it. For the furnishability. Does the floor plan help you, Andy? Yeah. Yeah, it's just if if you okay, it's a it's a bedroom. So bedrooms. Bedrooms. when the truck arrives from Bob's, it always has a bed and a couple of dressers. So I I hesitate to put full windows on two walls in a bedroom. It just doesn't give you enough wall space for your Typical yeah. bedroom furniture. That's all we're thinking there. Okay. All right. That's okay. This is the right side. This faces the uh, the right away, the east side of the building. And then the last one will be the rear elevation. Yeah, there it is. You can see the uh, the entry door. Um, we do have a, a patio to the left of the entry that that'll be there won't be a railing. There's no nothing to fall off there, so it'll be landscaped to give them some privacy. And uh, to the right, the windows are in the in the common room. And there's a door. Um, I believe that's the door to the fire alarm. The room where the where the fire control panel is. Service entrance or so. Okay. Yeah. If you go back two slides, you'll see another feature I could point out. Yeah, there's a door, just a flush door, which will be painted a color almost to match the brick, but that's actually where the trash is removed. There is a our trash room in the building, and the residents will be able to put their trash in there. It'll be an air conditioned trash room. And the private trash company will then be able to access it from the outside of the building. They won't be hauling it out through the through the main entry of the building. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Any questions from other board members at this time? Nope. All right. If I may, so we have our we have our uh, homework items for the architecture, which we've taken notes on, and we'll work on those in conjunction with Andy to get the information that was requested. Um, the, the next item I'd like to move on to, if I may, Mr. Chair, is uh, the landscape. And Jim Emanuel, are you here? Yep. Okay. So yeah. Really? Let me bring up the landscaping plan. And let me blow it up. Perfect. Great. That looks good. Uh, so as you can see on the landscape plan, it's a fairly simple planting design consisting of trees and mostly trees and shrubs. Um, along the front of the building facing the street, we've got trees that will serve uh, to complement the front elevation and to create a tree line uh, along the streetscape. Those would be uh, Japanese tree lilacs, which would bloom in the late spring, early summertime. So they get a nice white flower on them. As we go around the building to the right hand side, you see some uh, Kusa dogwood trees. And then in the parking lot over on the uh, left to the northwest, we've got some larger trees, Zelkova and uh, red maple, a couple of red maples that would serve as uh, trees within the parking area to give a little bit of canopy over on that side. The plantings consist uh, in the front elevation of uh, evergreen type plantings and a few deciduous plants there. We have ink berries there, which are a uh, shrub that retains its foli green foliage through the winter. And we also have um, some little leaf rhododendrons, Olga Mesut rhododendrons, which got a, a pink flower in the spring. You'll notice that the bed line kind of sweeps in and out, uh, complementing the shapes of the trees. There'd be grass between the plantings and where the uh, potential sidewalk would be. Um, and we would have that as a mulch bed and then a grass area uh, between the building and the street. Uh, along the side of the building, the right-hand side, we've got some different varieties of plants, some uh, clethras and red twig dogwoods and so forth that would tolerate a little bit more shade than along the front and the uh, left side or the west side, which is the southern and, and uh, southwest exposure. Uh, towards the side uh, where the sign is, we've got low growing plants. Um, so those would just be dwarf grasses, little blue stem grass, agrolo sumax, which are just a kind of a ground cover plant, uh, and some uh, catmint, which is a purple flowering perennial. Those would be the kinds of things that would uh, give some color, but also take some, uh, not be too tall to, to impede on, on um, view corridors and, and signage and so forth. Along the back of the property where the stone wall is, we've got uh, feather reed grasses, which grow up seasonally, but won't get abused by snow plows because the, uh, the, the season of those would be the summer, spring and summertime. Uh, when the winter comes, you can cut those back and, and uh, any snow removal that would need to take place or plowing uh, would be able to occur as those plants would be flush cut and the wall would be exposed. We've got the maple tree and then set back further, um, uh, some red twig dogwoods, which are shrubs, uh, dogwood tree itself, and some arborvitae trees with a kind of layer of grass uh, in the front of that. At the entrances, we're just wanting to accent some of these with some evergreens that would kind of punctuate the entrances. So we've got metal um, uh, above the door in a different color that accentuates the entranceways. With these, uh, with this design, we've got a gold thread cypress and a dwarf Alberta spruce near the side entrance along the back. We've got sea green junipers that are um, screening the uh, electrical uh, pad towards the back entrance near the handicap units. Uh, so that provides an evergreen screen, a durable evergreen screen, and then some feather reed grasses again, which are a little bit more flexible to allow access to it if needed. And bear in mind that we're maintaining, um, or there will be uh, some large maples, four or five large maples at the rear of the site that will be the most prominent, likely the most prominent landscape features um, that will remain as part of the, uh, as part of the landscape composition on this project. So that's and, and what's your plan on protecting the large maples along that side? 
during construction? Well, I think during construction, it would just be a standard uh, detail that we would we would put some type of a, um, a tree protection barrier uh, to the furthest extent possible and move it when the pavement is going to be put in place closer uh, to the tree. But I think that uh, usually what I what I recommend is a, a um, kind of a staked stakes with sort of not just snow fence, but maybe like wood boards that would uh, that would uh, deter any activity uh, as close to the drip line as possible, and then moving that inboard as this final construction occurs. I, I guess I'd want to see at some point um, that protection before you started digging foundations and putting scaffolding up and all that stuff because this one on the corner uh, closest to the building just seems to me as you're running around here with lifts, et cetera, et cetera, is, is pretty vulnerable. Yeah, I agree. I think that we're, we are, um, let me just check what the distance there is. That's about, you know, it's a 15 inch maple that's about 19 feet as it measures on the survey from where the proposed building will be. So, you know, we typically would have 15 feet on a, on a commercial site, you'd have 15 feet of clear space. So um, we could certainly put some tree protection there to, to try to make Yeah, I'm just safe. thinking more compaction, root compaction, all that stuff. Yes, I agree, I agree. This, these trees are actually in a neighbor's lot. Yeah, but their roots aren't and their limbs aren't. Well, and... I, under I understand. And my question, I guess my question is, right now it shows a stockade fence on the neighbor's side, but it's not really on the property line. And I'm wondering whether these trees, what, you know, like when we were doing the uh, 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 Greenwood Station project, some of those trees needed to be thinned and some of them need to be cleaned up and the like. And they came to an agreement with the abutter basically to do some work. I'm, I don't know what the condition of these particular trees are, uh, whether they need some work as well. So the question I guess is, is there some pruning and other things that should be done, but it would have to be reached with an agreement with the abutter since it's not this property's trees. Yeah, I, I think that that's a possibility. Uh, you know, any pruning uh, that overhangs the property or something that we would be able to do, but the best practice really would be to prune right back to the, um, you know, the origin or, or the central leader of the, of the tree itself, which may or may not be, you know, they sort of branch out. Some of them have stronger central leaders than others, uh, depending on what, what is required for pruning. Um, so any work that would be overhanging in, in this lot's airspace would be able to be done, but I think the best practice would be to uh, maybe come to some sort of an arrangement where the uh, where, where there's a um, a coordinated effort to understand what the needs of the tree for the for the health of the trees are to make them as healthy as they can be. In this yeah, and I, I'd ask that you, since you're looking at the whole picture here, that you look at the trees and come back and report to us as to what you think the conditions are. Um, you know, and and we and I agree with Chip. Basically, we want to protect these trees if they're in halfway decent shape. Well, we have to anyway, even if we don't like them, because it's not our trees to deal with. Yeah, Jim, I I don't know that we need a report back. I think once they start well, site work, we have a meeting out there yes. and just make sure that they're actually where they say they are. They're actually the size they think they are, and all that. Right, and make sure that it, they're worthwhile to be saved. I don't want a written report either, but I think a verbal report would be enough. But you know, I think they should be looked at now and not hold off until later, so that we can identify the issues. You know, I I don't know how well these are actually plotted on the site. You know, it could be closer to the building than we we know at this point. Um, you know, when you do a survey, you put these things in, you're you're focusing on other things. So. You know, I'd, I'd just like to know the condition of them, I guess, even if it's just verbal. Yeah, that's that's uh, certainly doable. Uh, you know, as, as I recall, having been by the site a few times, I mean, they look, they look pretty thick and full. Um, that doesn't mean they couldn't benefit from some type of internal pruning either, uh, but we could 
certainly elaborate a little bit on the on the condition of the you tree. You got one of them's 22 inches, basically. That's a pretty good sized tree. Right. Correct. And yet all and were the- you in, Were you involved in the decisions on the curbing? I was Parking not. lot curbing? <laughs> no. Okay, the, is that site, Brian? I think that was I'm similar. trying to figure out why the, the curb is flush on the back, back here. At the eight, eight spaces, there's in the middle, there's, you know, BGC flush. I'm John, trying do, to figure out John, do you want to address is. that? Yeah, um, that had to deal with the way the grading worked out because we are putting the curving in, uh, creating kind of a low spot in that back area and the way to get, ensure that that water, uh, surface water that falls on that area has an exit. Um, we just created basically a cut in the curbing so that it could flow out into the parking lot area. So wait, which way is it flowing, John? From where it says grass. From the grass to the? To the parking lot. There's going to be a curb cut at that. That's what you're envisioning there. Right in here. Okay. Right. Just a drop. Yeah. Just one space is what it looks like to me. Yeah. A little less than one space. Yeah. Like I said, it's just to create kind of a relief point for water that could collect in that area. There's not a large watershed to it, but we didn't want to trap water in back there. Makes sense to me. Thank you. It's also nice, John, that we don't even have to discuss curbing anymore. At the type of curbing? Yes. Or at so, least when you bring us site plans, we don't. So a couple questions. Uh, Chip, I, I know I'm sure you've already looked at the schedule. Any um, specific concerns with no, Mr. Ma Emmanuel even knows not to do inch and a half to two anymore, and he went right to two and a half to three, so we don't even have to upgrade him. <laughs> They're all learning, Mr. D Mr. Chairman. They're all learning. Okay, good. Okay. So variety, size, good. All right. Um, all, all good. All, all good. Right. Thank you. I, I also see the um, note. Jim, I did have one question, because I'm not familiar with the, the lilac in front. Yes. Is a lilac or a the, the, I what's their lilac. growth pattern? What's their growth pattern? And do we have to worry about, you know, the the elephant in the room that's not shown on any of these are the electrical lines? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that's really specifically one of the main reasons why this tree was selected because they are a uh, a neat sort of pyramidal forming um, upright tree that does not that is, it's a tree that's commonly used or recommended by municipalities for use in areas where there are power lines. Um, they get about 20 to 25 feet tall. The upper branches won't be uh, heavy or load bearing in a way that would uh, interfere or fall or break power lines. Um, so they're, they're an, I thought, were perfect height. They don't get too wide or big to create conflicts, but they have just enough presence to be ornamental. Uh, and to have a have a presence with the building and, and the a little bit front elevation of the building, and their salt tolerance is good. Yeah, they're a, they are a um, tree that's used for streetscape design, so they do have good okay. salt tolerance. They do when they, once they're established, they do have pretty good drought tolerance as well too. Great. Thank you. Okay. So the other thing I think everyone's learning, Chip, is. Uh, the note under the table, all landscape areas <laughs> irrigated. Um, yeah. Um, but I would ask uh, again, is it, well, I, just a reminder um, that all the areas that around the site, um, you know, you've got standalone islands on the different corners, the back, the left hand side, that um, we ensure the lines make it out there. We've encountered that recently where right. an area that was supposed to be landscape didn't happen. The lines never made it out there. So uh, we would want to ensure they, they, they make it to all these areas and not just around the building. Um, I would also ask, um, where are we putting the snow, potentially? Other than that grass area in the back that now has a flush curb to melt into. But are, are we looking at basically removing anything if it gets over? 
because I don't see a lot of areas to put snow. I think snow removal or snow storage areas, I'm not sure if John had designated those on the, on the site civil plan. Um, what I can say is that there's the, there is a gra that grass area in the rear. Um, there is the area in the lower, I mean, in the northwest corner where that red maple is that would tolerate, that's a salt tolerant tree that would tolerate a snow stockpile uh, underneath at the base and that you know that would just have the uh, the stem of the tree would be the only thing that would be there um, and the same the same would go with that Zelkova tree as well too so there's a potential for stockpiling I don't know that we have yeah you know, I, th I think Dave that in the ops uh, manual or you know this is a big enough building that would take an operational manual um, and with that, you know, trash removal, how that's occurring, which we've been, which has been talked about, but, you know, snow removal, one of the things is that on this street, uh, you know, we're tight. I know it meets the requirements, but there's not a lot of space for extra cars. Um, so given that, I would think that, that you couldn't lose spaces. So at the right. point that, you know, you started losing spaces, you'd have to haul. Yep. No, I figured it would be an Operation O&M thing, but just looking at the landscape and, and the layout, whether we considered areas where that we could put some things, that's why I brought it just up. Just that one grass area. Yeah. Yeah. It may be a little here and there, but yeah, you got a truck in here pushing stuff around. There's, there's, yeah. there's some potential at the end of the, the parking lot where it says mulch. Um, yeah, right under those trees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on the on the uh, south west corner, it says uh, proposed landscape wall. What is that? Oh, I think we're just looking at that as the the sign the sign wall or something like that. So that was just a remnant label from from the uh, other plans. So that would just be uh, integrated with the signage for the building. What yeah, that's the brick wall that we showed in the rendering, and then the landscaping is is around uses at a back for. Right. Any lighting on it? Um, I don't know if we thought about that. I wasn't really thinking of lighting over there. There's no real reason for it. We'll okay. think through. We'll think through the detail on that and yeah. present it. Maybe like a monument address thing like we see on North Ave or something. Yeah. Okay. It'd be a, probably just a number, the, the street yep. number. Yep. I, I don't think we have any plans of coming up with the name, but we, we haven't really thought that through. Yeah, no, just future reference again. Um, but we use- All right, I'm good, Mr. Chairman, if there aren't yep. any other questions. Anyone else? Again, let me go no, back to the okay. okay. So uh, the last thing we had on our agenda on this was was site civil, um, and you know we can. I think we went through that plan. Where you know, if you want John to do that again, he can. I think the more um, um, significant aspects of that are the sidewalks that we talked about. Um, and uh, John can touch on that, but um, there is room in the right of way uh, for us to put public sidewalks. Uh, so, John, you want to um, kind of inform the board where you stand on that? Yeah, I, I sent over um, kind of a preliminary design to DPW uh, just to get their input on uh, the location. Uh, there is enough width to put the curbing sidewalk and a grass plot. Um, they actually did get back to me um, this evening and uh, they didn't really see any issue other than they were looking for a five foot wide sidewalk and they wanted to match the materials of sidewalks in the area and it's a concrete sidewalk across the street. So I can, from that information, I can go and, and kind of finalize the, the design of the sidewalk along the front end. And wasn't there a question about a fire hydrant as well? 
Yeah, I have not touched base. It looks like I did look at it on the site. Um, I think it's probably something that we put actually on the site itself. Um, probably just probably over just before you get to the sidewalk that goes to um, the entrance on the left hand side. There's, there's a grass area there. And John, what do we know about um, transformer if needed? Um, well, the transformer we show um, at the rear. Can yeah. you share the plan? Can somebody share the plan? Right, I saw it at the rear. Is that confirmed yeah. or is that your hope? Hold on. <laughs> um, here we go. You want me to? I can share. All right. I just did, John. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've had discussions um, with the light department about the location of the transformer. Uh, they didn't have any issues with that location. Uh, there is a possibility, depending on what the actual load letter ends up coming out, that there may not be a need for a, power, a pad mounted transformer and it can be something that's mounted on um, the utility pole. But until we get kind of refine that a little more, we won't know. But I have gone over this location with the light department. They were okay with it. Yeah, you're gonna, make, you're gonna make it more ugly. You already got light poles out there. Then you're gonna put a, a big cylinder on the top of it to make it even more ugly. I'd rather have the transfer route back. Well, I'll push on the light way. department call though, isn't it? Well, we can have we can have some say in that. We can have discussions with them. And what is their policy, Brian? Now for electric meters, is are they going in an electric room or do they have to be on the outside of the building? I think we said we were putting them in an electric room, didn't we, John? And Andy? Yeah, I just I need to confirm about. I know in the past we've they've wanted access to the room from the outside. And I did not confirm with them whether um, they could now do it remotely from outside the building. They've been doing it. It seems to, it seems to keep changing, John. It does just keep changing. Didn't we just run into this with um, 600 North Ave? 598, yeah, they put them on yeah. the outside. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So yeah, what that's I, also gas meters as well. Yeah, which that was also doesn't have yeah. any of because you can't get gas anymore. Right. Those were, was, those were gas meters there. Yeah. At five ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah, and and the electric the electric was in a room behind those meters. Yeah. Yeah. So, on Main Street, we had to put the gas meters out, but not the electric meters. I'm, I think with the remote readouts, we'll be okay. All right, so just put it on the list, Brian, please. I, I've got that on the list. We're going to talk to him about the transformer location and the electric meter room. We, then we get also it in then get it in writing so we can flash it to him later. Yeah, and John had some discussions <laughs> with them on uh, putting the lines on the ground. We, Greg had raised that. The expense alone for the light department work was over 150000 not even including digging. That's just wire work and not including um, – the you know the cable and and Verizon, so the, you know for 19 unit building it's it's what we thought it's just you know cost prohibitive and and you know light department although you know we don't go to them for aesthetics you know their comment was you know all that money to lower them in front of our building and then they're going to go back up again um, because there's no no plan to do this whole street uh, in the future so. Yeah, it's just going to be not practical financially. Yeah, the closest the closest underground in this area really is all the way down um, at Audubon Road. So this whole section is overhead. So they didn't they didn't see that there was really any benefit to I you know from that their standpoint in terms of um, going underground for you know three sections and then back up again. Actually, it was, it's a little problematic in terms of um, putting the risers on the pole, you know, to get the, all the risers that would be necessary for the poles to go down and back up again.
Okay, well, appreciate you at least having the conversation as requested. Yep. So uh, other punch list items that we have, we, we um, I think we'll be before the Traffic Advisory Committee this month, I've corresponded with them and they're, and they're getting us on the agenda as you requested. Uh, you mentioned the hydrant, which John's working on. Um, the sidewalks we touched upon. Um, and then obviously, we, you know, we've got to put together an O&M plan, which, which I'll, I'll get working on. Um, and now we've got uh, our other punch list items um, to, to uh, deal with. Okay. So Brian, as long as we're on the sheet, did you go through that table at the top and just go through the various forms of relief that would be needed for this project if it went forward as presented? I don't know if we did that in the intro. It probably got into detail. So, is this an appropriate time to go through that? I can if you want. List? Pretty straightforward. So, um, for this type of project, the minimum lot area requirement, as you can see, is 4,000 square feet. We have 24,638. The lot area uh, density allowed is 20 units. We're proposing 19. Uh, the lot frontage requirement is 180 feet um, in the for the uh, mid-rise apartment. 40 feet in the business district. We, we meet both at 181.95. Lot <coughs> width, because of the funky shape of the lot, even though we have 180 feet of frontage, uh, we don't meet that requirement. Uh, so we're gonna need a special permit to address that. Floor and why is that? I'm sorry, can you just explain why that, why it's funky or what, where? It, yeah, so John, do you, yeah. John, do you mind uh, helping me on that? The lot wind or wind though. You can see you can see there's the 180 feet of frontage, but as you move back along the lot to the toward the rear, the lot comes back in, and so that 140 feet or 49 feet is in that area where the lot is not as wide as it is out front. Right here. Oh, from that that bend over to the left, the west side. Okay. In. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, the uh, setbacks, which uh, are 30 feet or the height of the building. So the front, we need, we're, we're seeking relief for all of, this, all of the setbacks uh, where we're situating the building. Uh, the front to bring it up to the street, um, the side on, in, in, the, uh, in the rear, um, which is common as you know. Uh, maximum number of stories is five. This is a four-story building. Maximum height is 50 feet for the mid-rise apartment, 60 feet in the business district. We're not seeking any relief for height. We meet the requirements at 49.1. Maximum building coverage is 35% for mid-rise and 80% in the business district. We meet both of those requirements at 25.6. And minimum open area is 30% for mid-rise. It's only 10% in the business. We meet both at 30.4. All right, I think you missed the floor area ratio. Oh, I thought I hit that. I, oh, I, I skipped that. I'm sorry. Floor area ratio is 1.5 is allowed, and we're only at 1.02. So we meet that requirement, too. Thank you, John. OK, and on the parking. And the parking, we we went over that. We we meet the uh, parking space required is twenty eight point five, and we have twenty nine spaces, so we're not seeking any re reduction in the number of parking spaces. And that's Brian, my... remind me: do, do handicap spaces count in the count? Yes. yes. So even though there may never be anybody allowed to park in those, they're part of the count. Correct. Hmm. Okay. And this is nine by 18, because again, we've gone into this in some other projects. <laughs> full size, the aisle widths are, are they noted on here? We got 25, 24. I think you have them on a different sheet, don't you, John? Yeah, the layout plan, you know what she is. I think it's the next one. Keep going? No? No, back up. Back up, there we go, nine by 18. 24 feet right here. Yeah, 24 feet. And nine by 18 typical. And we assume all the way around, even though, yeah, all the way around to the entrance. 
yep. holding that we're holding that aisle width. Okay. Correct. I don't I don't think we're gonna need it, you know, sometimes if there's a tweak and a setback or something, um, um, we would need a special permit to address the parking requirements. I applied for it. That's one of the, and, and the reason I, I did that is I don't think we're going to need it, but not knowing what might happen during the hearing process and site plan that the board sometimes might request, hey, you know, even though you're not going to meet that requirement, shrink this or do that, and then it would trigger the need for it. So I always like applying for it just in case. Okay. And in terms of the number, you've got the required amount um, but again, as I think has come up a couple of times, there's really no street on street parking for any sort of visitors or overflow. So I'd be curious to hear what the TAC does. You haven't done your own study, right? You're just going to meet with the TAC? Correct. And get there. Okay. So we'll be looking for their, their recommendations if they think there's anything that might come into play here. But uh, again, the only thing we could do, board members, is reduce the units really to, to require fewer parking spaces or keep the number of parking spaces, but have fewer units and therefore perhaps fewer cars. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't think personally that traffic's gonna be as much of an issue. It's just overflow parking if, if there are um, a need for visitors or other. Um, so I'll be interested to hear what the TAC says on that. Well, some of these people might end up across the street on the, on the street across from them parking in a residential area, just parking and then walking over too. So, or going down to some of the other facilities down further, basically and parking in the parking lots down there and walking up. I don't think the neighbors are gonna be happy if they start having their friends park in the street across the way. We'll see. Yeah, And you know, other projects we've done closer to downtown or closer to the, the commuter rails and the bus lines. We just assume there's gonna be a certain number of commuters, you know, knowing that where the location of the building is and that, that you know, parking are, um, shouldn't be an issue, right? That may not even need what's what's provided um, um, in terms of, uh, and also traffic flow, but I don't know. I'm gonna be interested to hear, but this is this is the part of the project where we're talking about architecture, we're talking about massing, we're talking about materials and the overall um, layout and design of the, the property, right? And then the proposal. So, I don't want to get too far and start talking about O&M plans if, if we don't, we're not 100% comfortable moving forward with this, with this density, right? So maybe we need to hear from the TAC and kind of see what their take is. Well, I find it difficult if our parking requirements are 29 spaces for a building this size. Either we need to re, we have this conversation on yeah. every single project. We either need to relook at our bylaw and redo it based on two cars now or whatever, but they meet the bylaw. You know, I, I, it, it's we have this discussion every single project. So we either need to change the bylaw and add visitor spaces a certain percentage or something, or, but I don't think it's fair to start, you know, being critical of a project that meets the bylaw on parking. But it will be interesting to see what TAC says. But, you know, I think we really maybe need to, you know, increase the size of parking so that the buildings, so that we're not so tight. When was that bylaw written, do you know? I have no idea. I just know for 17 years, Amy, we've talked about this on every single project. Right. So maybe well, many of them, I agree, and they meet the bylaw, and many of them are near streets where there's auxiliary parking, like on a main street or North Ave, or there's other parking where people could, and you say, well, if there's visitors or whatever, there's a place for them. But we've had a couple that they weren't that, you know, that, that opportunity, and this is an example of that, or they might have to go down side streets. It's just something to consider, that's all. And I'll be interested to hear what the TSC says. Anyone else have a comment or question at this time? No. I'm looking for your answer, Amy. I thought I could find it real quickly. <laughs> but I think it goes back away because normally when our bylaws are modified, 
you'd see a date and I don't see a date. So I think it goes back a while. Okay. That's for another day. Um, all right, so um, that was it for this evening. Right, Brian? Yes, Mr. Chair. So action items, follow-ups are noted. So next time, um, two weeks? Yes, please. Okay, we can hit some of those. Do you, do you know if you'll be, you might not be before TAC and within that time, right? I, he said this month, so I just don't know. I'm waiting for Lieutenant the Innocent to get back. He's trying to get a meeting booked. Okay. So if, if, we, if we do, you know, I doubt that they would have a report for you by then anyways. Um, but if, if they do, we will uh, make sure you get it. And then other potential topics, board members and Brian, um, potentially an O&M, but. Um, yeah, I can start working on an O&M with a client. Because there's minimal, I mean, again, other than maybe an address sign, minimal signage, we kind of covered lighting. Um, Do we think we'll get a samples board in before that meeting? Andy, how long do you think it will take you to get samples to town hall? You're on mute. Andy, you're muted. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to procure some material. Two weeks is a little bit tight. I don't know if I'll have the boards. I'll do the best I can to have it, but um, some of the samples may take a little more time. Post office isn't quite doing what it used to do on that score. <laughs> All right, so just please let us know. If something comes in before the next meeting, you can give Gail I a heads up. I could give you a Still partial. Yeah, yeah I, I'd rather put the whole thing together, but uh, well, let's see how it goes. I'll see if I can procure the materials. I, I'd rather I'd rather see it all together as opposed yeah. to yeah. 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 I'd rather do it that way. Do we did we talked a little bit about uh, uh, fencing along the uh, uh, electric companies a uh, lot. Do we know what that fencing is? That's a good question. John are you specking that on your plan at this point or no? Um, no, th there's an existing fence there that's on the it's like, chain link, isn't it, John? But I I was not proposing a, an additional fence. So we're gonna so we're gonna look at all the wires and cables and everything else in there. I'm not sure that's the best aesthetics for this project. You guys want to think about that? Just yep. so, okay. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Anything else for tonight? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what about lighting for the the parking lot? Did we did we discuss any lighting on that? We did at the last meeting. We presented photometrics. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, So before we end uh, tonight's hearing, I will open up the public testimony. So I gotta just open up the participant board here. And get away from there we go. So if any member of the public wishes to ask a question or offer a comment on the testimony heard this evening, um, please raise your hands. I'm scrolling through the participants list here. I'm not seeing any. You would have to come off mute as well. Okay, hearing none, seeing none. Uh, we'll close with the public testimony for this evening. Again, there may be other, there would be opportunities with future testimony um, at future meetings. So um, we have our punch list and um, the plan is to come back move, in two weeks. I move that we continue this to September 23rd. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, Jim? Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Amy? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay. Uh, I got everyone. 
I think. Yep. Good. And I vote yes. So, all right. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Chair, the only thing I would say that is if we don't have our sample board, we don't have TAC, I don't know. I would ask Brian to continue this for another two weeks and not bring us in for a partial conversation. Let's be smart about this. Patient. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Sound okay, Brian? Because again, it, there would just be a couple of little updates if we didn't have this other materials yep. and TAC. Okay. So we'll continue for two weeks, see where we are. You'll let us know ahead of that if, uh, if it looks like we're going to push it out. I will. All right. Um, so we are now continued. Thanks, team, for coming in and the information tonight. We'll pause now before we move into our next uh, hearing, which is a new hearing. <clears throat> Okay, that next hearing is, as I said, a new hearing, 21-8, Henry and Marie um, Reg, hopefully you're not mispronouncing that too badly, uh, 25 Montclair Avenue. So Good evening, how are you? It's Ray, like R-A-Y, but you were oh, close. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna make a note of that, thank you. That's right. um, okay. I'm Marie Ray and my husband, Henry, Welcome. Nice to meet you. We are here, we are at 25 Montclair Ave, as you stated. Um, we are here before you as we desire to remove our existing deck, 12 foot by um, 14 foot wood structure, and replace it with a screened porch with a gabled roof, which would be 12 foot by 23 foot. So we would be extending the deck, the existing uh, deck would be enlarged by nine feet, um, five feet easterly, four foot westerly. Do you have a copy of the plan? Do you have a copy of the plan that you submitted with your application? I do. Um, if you will give me sharing rights, I will be able to do that for you. Everyone should be able to. You okay. Have a share option. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. So... I mean, we have copies, but again, if there's any other members right. of the public, then they get Can the Can you see of... my screen? Not yet. Oh. Did you select what to share? I so... did. Okay, hold on. Let's oh, try this nope. again. Yep. Something's coming. It. Yes. Okay. Now we see it. Okay, Port Montclair, where to go? Right I know, but he, all right, now can you see? We see Windows Explorer. All right, so now we got to get back here. Yes, that's what he's seeing, so it's in here. Is the plot plan? Yeah, the plot plan, why don't we start there? Um, this is the Montclair Ave estate plot plan, so this isn't going to help you. This is showing oh. us our lot, 25 Montclair Avenue. Okay. Or is it the proposed structure? Proposed structure plot plan, maybe? Yes. Oh, you know what? I bet because you're up here we go. Yes, I couldn't see that because here we go. Can you see that now? Put it up. <laughs> I don't know that I can put it up. Click it, click on it and open it up. He's not seeing it. When you said share, did you say share your screen or just a certain part? Of it your... says I am, you are sharing your screen. So it says I'm sharing it. So hold on, let's try it again. Proposed structured plot plan. It's, it's showing open to me. Can you folks see it? Let's see. Can you share? There we go. There okay, there we go. So here's the 
of the house and here is the existing deck. What, uh, well, here is the proposed deck. The existing deck doesn't go all the way to the end of the house like this. It is 12 foot, as you see here, but it only, it starts about here and ends about here. So we're going, um, five foot this way and four foot this way. Okay. Now, we are seeking relief because because this is a structure with a roof we need 25 feet here in accordance with the regulations and as you can see right this um property line is all natural ledge and i can show you that in the photos <clears throat> excuse me that i've provided so this isn't it isn't straight like this it's uh, you know natural ledge so it's it weaves in and out specifically on this end yeah i think the overhead that was included in your application shows a little bit of that okay so in order to get a variance you need to have some sort of hardship or excuse. So what is your hardship to be able to do that you need to do this as compared to make a smaller screened in porch that meet the setbacks? Well, basically, if, if you can see the property is very, very narrow. We're very limited to anything that we can do on this lot. Um, and we would like to expand our, our outdoor living space, particularly given the current conditions with COVID. Um, you know, we'd, we'd just like to be able to be, be outside in a bigger structure. The existing deck is very small. I can try to pull up some photos for you. I mean, there's really, it, it's not very usable. Uh, let's see if I can find those. No, I, I understand, but I guess you're not. So anybody want to help me with this? Maybe I'm not explaining myself well on the the points of a variance. Dave, Jim. So I can I can try. So have you guys, I, um, you, you've probably read the bylaw, right? right. Um, and you know, at least dimensionally, you need um, it needs to be 25 feet. The bylaw, and I'm just opening the right paragraph here. It's 66, 19066. That owing to circumstances related to soil condition, shape, or topography of the land or structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, little enforcement of the provisions of the chapter, you know, the bylaw on all the setbacks would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, and that we could grant such relief for, um, if, if we felt that it wouldn't provide, um, it wouldn't cause substantial detriment to the public good or nullify or, or derogate significantly from the intent of our bylaws. So, but, but the first part is, is key. And that's what I think what Chip was getting to. There has to be some demonstration of, of hardship, whether it's financial or otherwise, that you couldn't build something that meets the the, by, the setbacks, that it couldn't be 25 feet. It would be 21 feet from your house instead of 23, and it would meet the bylaw. The, um, existing, the existing deck is 12 feet, and we're not asking to make it any wider than that. The problem oh, 12, that sorry. Yeah. Right. The problem that presents is that, and if we were building just a deck without a cover, we we wouldn't have any issue because the setback requirement is only 20 feet, and then there wouldn't be an issue. But what we're asking to do is is put a roof on this because one, if you can see, we're at the edge of the town forest and it's very buggy. So to sit out there without covering, it, it, we can't use it. And because the lot is very uneven because of the natural ledge, in order to make the, the structure that size, it wouldn't be a rectangle. In order to continue to meet that setback requirement as we head to, headed to the west, we would have to 
continuously narrow in that structure so it wouldn't be a rectangle. That would definitely, um, I think, affect the, the neighborhood and certainly not enhance it by having, a, by having an unusual structure, an unusually shaped structure on that property. You, you've, got, you've got a huge amount of property. You have created a problem of your own, basically, by putting it where you put it and caused, you know, when you say it's narrow, it's only narrow because you've created the narrowness of the whole thing. And yet you've got a huge amount of property going up to the far end. I'm, I'm wondering whether, in fact, a different shape, which may round the corner, basically, on that, on that edge, would make more sense. And that would pull the 23 feet, basically, back to, to a point where, in fact, it could be 25. And it turns the corner, basically, around the side of the house. But no, not knowing what the plan is on the inside, I can't say whether there's actually a, an architectural solution to that. But that's one way of avoiding the whole issue and even coming before us. I'm, I'm not sure that I follow you. If we were to it would be an L. It would be an L-shaped porch, is what I'm talking about. I, I guess what I'm hearing, though, is they're claiming topography and the shape of the lot. That in order to put their porch the size that they need to, they need a variance because right. of the shape. placing an existing structure. Which again, we have to remember, this is a rectangle on a lot that is not rectangular. Right? It has it. It decreases as it gets towards one end. We're trying to build a simple rectangular porch that's screened in for bugs and coverage um, and um, not have a deck, that's all. I mean, it's, it's really as simple as that. The, you know, building unusually shaped structures, I think, deters from the, the beauty of the neighborhood, which is very traditional colonial homes. Um, we're trying to keep it tasteful and um you know barely overlap the edge of the you know the edge of the variance by just building a, a simple rectangle that would be make a nice livable space and i'm not sure i follow the l shape because the um as you head as you head easterly our property drops off we have a, a retaining wall that comes, you know, you come to the backyard up some steps and then there's a retaining wall. So we can't, we wouldn't be able to swing over and to make an L because there's no, there's no land there. It drops down and it becomes the driveway. Right, right. Do you I have photo, the going. photos in your packet there where yeah. you can see that? We do. Okay. And I do see that. You don't see it on the plot plan. It doesn't show the driveway, but Right. Um, the, the photos do. So that's what Mr. McBain was going to is, is doing something on that side, but not knowing um, the right. interior layout and whether that could happen. It avoids the need for a variance. But again, I think it's a, it's a salient point that there's already something there that it extends beyond the back of the property 12 feet. You're simply looking to replace that with something that is a screened in with a roof and that then changes the nature of that extension on the house. And it has to conform and you need a variance even to stay with that same footprint of 12 feet um, right. different length but same width away from the house um it's a, it's a, a foot and a half within the within the setback so right the length isn't the issue it's it's becomes the width correct and, and again, I, yeah. to make so the point the length, the length is the issue well it depends if the 12 if they did a 20 foot deck if they did 12 by 20, 12 by 19, at some point that becomes 25 feet from the rear setback. It's the 12, the it's the 12 the feet that's the issue. It's the 12 really. feet that's the issue in accordance with the regulations. That's where the setback is. It, we currently have a 12 foot deck, but because that it's meets deck. The, that meets the setback. Right, because it's, it doesn't so have a cover. So the reason you're not meeting the setback is you're extending the length, not the no, width. No, sir. We're not meeting the setback because now we want to put a roof on the structure. And that okay. requires a different setback. But your current porch, I bet, meets the setback 25 feet. 
right because it's a, death, because it's a, a deck because it doesn't have a roof on it no they're, they're, yeah, you're not following i'm not doing a good job explaining i I think her hardship, though, is the topography of her land. Correct. There is no hardship. We're just making it up. We can call it the topography and give these people the porch they want out to the forest, but we just need to admit that it's the shape of the lot that we can claim. So I, I honestly least. don't believe that the, the fact that we're taking this this uh, structure from 14 feet to 23 feet isn't where we're violating the setback. Can you put it's, the picture back up for a second? I, I, I think we're following you and I, I think we're gonna get there. I just, we, we just wanna make sure everyone's comfortable with it. Can you just share that picture again? Can you see it? Not yet. Uh. Yeah. Can't get to the sharing. I am confused. This is where all the photos are right here. Right. So we open the structure, but they can't see it. So you, you don't there see the share go. option down the bottom of the screen again? Yep, we got it. Okay. All right, it's starting to come. Okay, there we go. Right. So if so you this can is just- the proposed new. Right. Right. Yeah. So what, what I think Mr. Tarbell was getting that is see where the, see where the corner is, where the dotted line comes off. Right. The 23.6 yep. and that the property line on the right side goes out to an angle. It's not yep. exactly parallel to the rear of your building. Right. Correct. That if, if this proposed structure, instead of being 12 by 23 would say 12 by 20 or 12 by 18, that then that, that corner further up, would be farther away from your property line and probably meet the set. Is that where you were going, Tim? Well, let me let me point out. I just measured it basically. That's why I left the room for a moment. Is the uh, if if you were to pull that line, the 23 foot back, you'd have to go all the way back to 10 foot. So the porch would be 12 by 10 in order to get a 25 foot setback in be Correct. Like right. So you wouldn't you wouldn't have that big a porch, quite frankly. That's okay. exactly what we have so, now. It's and, basically and, uh, an unusable deck that the you know. And to the, the right, it's the town forest, correct? Correct. Yes, this is town forest here. So their so their hardship is their shape of the lot and the ledge on the lot. And let's just move on. Yeah, that's definitely a factor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, let me see. We did receive course, while others contemplate any other comments or questions, we did receive correspondence from other town boards. Uh, um, again, um, so from the CONCOM, uh, it is not inside, their, it is outside their jurisdiction, so they don't need um, a review of this project. That, that can sometimes come into play, um, just FYI. Fire department, they've reviewed uh, the application and they have no objections. And then today we also received one from the town engineer. Just have to find it. Uh, huh. Too many open. Uh, there it is. Um, town engineer, Mr. Wilson today. Again, general comments, no known drainage easements or easements within the property limit, no issues with the project. Um, if the public right away or public utility is impacted, you'll need to hire a contractor just to make 
with the DBW to make necessary repairs. So again, you're talking about in the back, these are general comments, standard comments we would typically see from the DBW on any such project, but just so you're aware um, that these memorandums, again, no, no objections from any town boards, just they're in, they're in the file as part of our record um, for your information. Um, Dave, does Montclair Estates itself have any covenants for additions or anything else? Do they have any rules or regulations? I don't know. Do the owners know? Are we on mute? No, yeah. there are no there are no restrictions. There like are the, some some yeah. have HOAs and you have to mm -hmm. go through them for nothing. No, nothing like that. Okay. I mean, we have like. Uh, you know, fire sprinkler systems up here and everything. It's um, right. Yeah. That was all put in as part of the requirements of the build, so it's very safe. Yeah, there's only four houses in this. On Montclair, correct. Yeah, it's a there's small more small. up uh, Castle Clare. Right. right. Okay. Anything else, board members? No. Okay. If any member of the public wishes to ask a question or as a comment, uh, please come off mute, raise your hand, raise your Zoom hand. Not seeing any, not hearing any. So with that, we'll close with the public testimony. Board members, any has any final comments before we proceed? No. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move that we grant the variance under Article 6, Section 190-34 and Table 2 of the Zoning Bylaws to allow the variance uh, for the porch as depicted on the site plan created by Paul Finocchio, dated July 1st, 2020, uh, for the raise, uh, on the basis of the variance being uh, needed due to the topography and shape of the lot. And that granting this variance will not be detrimental to the neighborhood in any way. Second. Thank you, Amy. Any discussion? And I give my vote to Mr. Feely. Uh, okay, so Jim, Dave. the only extra we have tonight, right? Yeah, I'm just noting, yes, exactly. We have six. So, all right, so the voting members, myself, Jim, Amy, Joe, and Mike. So, by a roll call vote, um, oh, I'm sorry, any discussion from the voting members? No. Okay, Jim? Uh, yay. Amy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Michael, there we go. Thank you. Your audio is cutting out again. Um, we we got a, a, a raised hand from uh, Mr. Feely, um, and, and I vote yes as well. So that is unanimous. Um, so your variance is granted. Um, so what what you'll expect? Yes. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, I think he's frozen in time. Yeah, he's <laughs> um, so what what will happen? We we will draft the uh, I will draft the, the decision for you. I'll send it to you for review, um, um, and then once once we're satisfied that it, it's ready to go, it'll be filed by by uh, Gail, our town, um, our, our board clerk, um, and um, and then once the appeal period ends, twenty yeah. business days, um, if there's no appeal, then you can request a building permit. Um, I, I would ask if you can forward the, the, any um, PDFs to Gail, so that we can include them with our online decision for our records. Okay. Um, and she'll send them off to me, and I'll note those, you know, the dates and so forth in, in the decision. Okay. And PDFs, what? Just Are all you, the documentation. Do you want the photos electronically um, as well? If you would like to include them, that would be great. I mainly okay. need the plans, but yes, the photos. Yeah. Anything that you submitted with the application, 
uh, the aerials, whatever you have. Okay. Okay. So you'll probably hear from me in, in you know, within a week. I'll, I'll try to get to it um, maybe by this weekend. But, uh, and then once, once it's filed, then, then we'll see how it goes from there. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I pre appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Have good a good evening. Good, evening. Okay. good night. Good luck. Good luck. Hey. Okay. Brian's coming. Is Brian coming back on this? I'm here. I'm here. You are. Okay. Um, so are we gonna are we gonna do these together? Do you want to read them together and yeah. present them together? I think that was I was gonna ask that. Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Those are listed separately, separate applications. But okay. So 21-9 to 249, Nahan Street Realty Trust, and 21-10, Studio Realty Trust at 251, Nahan Street. So, Brian, whenever you are ready. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, maybe, could I have control to maybe bring something up? You always have control. I don't know about that. This is the most frightening oh, thing I do. I didn't say you're always in control. I just <laughs> not when it comes to Zoom. Um, okay. I think after six months you'd be a little better at this. I, I would too, Mr. Tabell. I tend to agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Except right. we're old. Good God. Okay. I think I just have to shrink that down. Can you can you see that? We can see it. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, um, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail uh, representing um, the two applicants in this matter as it relates to 249 to Hunt Street, 249 to Hunt Street Realty Trust. And as it relates to 251 to Hunt Street, uh, the owner of that property is Studio Realty Trust. Um, this is somewhat of a unique circumstance. Um, both, both of the trusts, um, various members of the Zagaria family have interests uh, uh, in these properties. Um, there are uh, members of the Zagaria family who are participating in Zoom. Uh, John, I think, uh, Jeff is on, and also Pat is on a uh, line. Um, Zagaria family is, is very well known historically in the town of Wakefield. Um, somewhat of a fixture on the Han Street. Um, um, Mr. Zagari, who I refer to him as Patsy, uh, taught music uh, for a number of years, starting in, in the early 60s uh, on the Han Street, and probably taught um, a number of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, colleagues of mine uh, from Wakefield. He, took, he taught a tremendous musician. He, he played numerous instruments and, and taught numerous in, in, instruments to the youth of Wakefield for decades. Um, the Zagaria family um, had had uh, interest in these properties uh, going back to, um, I believe it was 1935 uh, when they bought uh, 249 uh, Nahan Street, which is right here. Uh, and the lot lines of 249, I'm going to take you with my cursor. This is the frontage of 70 feet. It goes back all the way back circles back around, comes over here, and then comes back down to Nahant Street. So certainly an odd shaped lot. Um, and they acquired that in, in, as I mentioned, in 1935. Um, they acquired 251 Nahant Street in 1947. Both of these properties were owned by the Ward, Ward family, W-A-R-D, uh, going back uh, into the early 20s. Um, we know for a fact through research that there were uh, single family structures on both of these lots prior to zoning uh, through work in the title and through Mr. Zagaria's knowledge and history of the property. Uh, interestingly enough, um, 251 um, was used somewhat at one point as a single family home, but as, as somewhat of a seasonal home for a certain period of time because um, the, what, we are, what we fondly know of as the pit today, which is right across the street, used to be uh, a pond um, years ago that, believe it or not, people actually used to swim in. Um, so 
it was utilized uh, for that for a number of years, but again, as a dwelling. Um, in the 19, early 1960s, Mr. Zagaria began using 251, and that's where he uh, taught his music while living in 249. Two, uh, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna kind of switch the screens to give you an idea. You just had it. Oh, there you go. So this is, this shows you uh, both of the properties. This is 249. Um, and this is 251. You know, really, really uh, good looking building. You can see the music sign that Mr. Zagaria uh, has out front. Uh, and that's where a lot of um, his lessons were taught over the years uh, to orient you. Um, so if you go This is where it gets dangerous. Here we go. This is where the, this is um, 243 Nahan Street, right here, the Gray House. And then this is the street, this is the little 40B project that went in um, with all the houses out back. Um, and then as you come back the other way, you'll see that the pit is right across the street from these houses. And you come further down in Partridge Lane uh, abuts the property. But what's interesting, um, Partridge Lane really doesn't abut 251. Um, one of the houses way up at the end, way up into Partridge Lane actually owns this strip of land uh, that comes down. So, so the 251 does not have frontage on Partridge Lane. This strip of land, that, you know, and kudos to the owner, very well maintained, as you can see, but the house is way up there. It's kind of like a, like a, an, uh, kind of a, an L that comes off of that, um, a narrow strip that goes all the way down. So what over the years, um, it's ob always been the Zagaria's intention to, um, to sell both of these separately. They're in the process of doing so. And uh, basically, um, we believe that, you know, there's arguments that they are grandfathered. I've had discussions with Jack Roberto before his retirement for quite some time on this. I've had the, uh, discussions with town council on this and with Ben DeCristoforo. Uh, the new building commissioner. Um, the, the concern arises that because this this dwelling wasn't used as a single family for a period of time, um, the impact on that ha that has on the grandfathering. So even though we have the arguments, it was suggested by those parties, um, the building commissioners, that that we should um, uh, seek variances to clean this up, if you will, for lack of a better term, um, to keep them uh, as, as separate. Um, let me go back to the plan. Can you see the site plan? Yeah. yeah. To keep them as, as separate lots. So this is the current conditions, um, or I should say, let me take a step back. This is the proposed conditions plan, uh, which, and let me go to the current conditions plan for right now. Okay, so this is the current conditions plan. Um, and what I want to stress is we are not seeking to change anything on 249. Um, not looking to do anything to that structure. We're not um, seeing anything, Mike, uh, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. When you went to switch files, we lost it. There we go. Okay, thank you. You got it? Yeah. Great. So this is the current conditions plan, and what what we're doing is not seeking to change anything here. Um, all we the only relief that we're seeking is because of the uniqueness to the shape of this lot. Is we're requesting variances for the deficiency of this lot at this point, which are the frontage, the rear setback, the side setback here, and the lot width. 
Uh, besides that, everything complies in the watch shape, I should say, because it, this just has the funky watch shape that under the geometric calculation um, does not meet the requirement. So we, you know, we certainly have uniqueness uh, to, the, to the shape of the lot. And all we want to do, and again, stressing is not change a thing here, um, to just, in essence, keep these lots separate um, and seek the variance on this lot to do so. This is the existing circumstances on 251. Um, it, as you can see, it has 60 feet of frontage, has 4,800 square feet of land. Um, what's interesting about this structure, and this is what kind of complicated a little bit, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a legal non-conforming structure because it meets all of the setback requirements. It's got 20 feet from the street, it's got more than 20 feet from the rear, and it's got 15, more than 15 on all sides. Um, but because of the non-use, we're seeking a variance to confirm this lot. And then, let me go back. We're looking for the ability to make it a little bit bigger, um, to make the foundation 29 by 28, uh, to allow it to be up to what we're showing in the zoning table. And, and I'll go over you know, both of these lots now through the zoning table. Um, the requirement, as you know, is 12,000 square feet. 251 is short, obviously, but it goes back to the 1920s when it was created. Uh, 249 has more than adequate they're both deficient on frontage. Um, on the front setback, uh, 251, we're um, looking to easily maintain that requirement uh, and beat it. On, um, on the uh, uh, 249, we're continuing to meet that requirement. The side yard requirement is being met on the right side for 251. 249 already has that deficiency. We're looking to just clean that up with a variance and for lack of a better term, bless it. Uh, the left side, 15 feet, that, that will be met here. And on this one, 24 feet. And again, we're not looking to change that, uh, but there's no relief needed. Rear setback uh, is uh, 25 feet. This would be 26.6 feet on 251, meeting that requirement. This just because of the funky shape of the lot doesn't meet it now at 22.8. So that is one of the requests of relief um, for that real lot line. Um, lot coverage, both of them easily meet uh, the requirements. Uh, open space, uh, they both would meet those requirements. And height, there would be no height difference. And in, in the, currently the house at 249 is one and a half stories. Not looking to change that at all, but asking to be able to build uh, 251 uh, to up to 2.5, two and, 2 two and a half stories. The Ryan. interesting thing is, if I could just add, both of these lots are assessed as separate lots uh, by the assessor's department. So they're recognized as separate lots. Um, and, um, you know, as far as, you know, obviously the unique the uniqueness of the circumstances is to have these structures, uh, the, the kind of the little house, if you will, on the Han Street, with the uniqueness of the shape of the lot um, and um, you know, the hardship, you know, I, I kind of got into that is, is pretty easy here. The Zagarias have always anticipated that these will be sold uh, as separate properties um, and kind of planned on that financially for their retirement. Um, so there certainly is a hardship. You know, the third prong on the variance is, you know, the, any, you know, the, the effect on the neighborhood if you will, is, you know, I think what we're proposing here is um, really doesn't have an effect on the neighborhood. We're not looking, to, again, not looking to change anything on 249. That remains as, as is. Looking to build something here, or have the ability. What the request here is for these variances is to be able to either maintain the existing little dwelling and add on to it so as not to increase uh, or, or go beyond the allowed setback requirements and be able to go up to two and a half stories um, or in essence, raise it, completely raise it and build a new house um, that would meet those requirements. But as far as this lot goes on impact on the neighborhood, there's really no um, 
structure that's in the butter here. We're our own butter here. There's nothing out back because 249 protects this from anything that would happen here, from anybody out back. And across the street um, is the pit. So that has a negative impact on these properties more than anything that happens here would have an impact on those properties. So Brian, Brian. Yes. Um, you've got two sites here. Now, normally you would come to us, uh, like in the case of 249, and say there was a bank closing up and the bank's got questions basically about the uh, existing conditions. So we'd have to confirm the existing conditions basically that that's the way it is. I don't think we get into any fancy footwork at that time. We just con we're just concerned or your, your, the bank would be concerned that in fact, we're fine with the way it is. So it's, it's already an existing circumstance. So I don't know that we need to do any fancy footwork um, and then, and then on this other one, that's been pre-existing for some time. It only comes down to whether, in fact, there can be a larger structure on there, and that's about what it amounts to, isn't it? Or is there more to it than I am anticipating here? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, the, the concern that the reason we've come here is because um, uh, Mr. Barrett, Michael Barrett, who's the broker, has been marketing these properties. And, and because the, the property at 251 was used as a studio for a number of years, it, it, it's, you know, they're, they're approaching the building inspector and saying, you know, can we still use that as a single family house? Um, we believe that you can, but, but there's a little bit of gray area on that. Well, but um, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about 249. Correct. There's really not much to that. It's just basically legalizing the existing circumstance, just which we've done at other times when you've come before us, when there's a bank issue, basically for a closing or something like that. That's right. I mean, it, 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 in reality, we're not looking to change anything. Right. Um, the only thing we're looking to change is the ability to build something a little bit bigger by either um, enhancing the structure at 251. Um, that's, but not, that's, a, that's a different yeah. site that has nothing yeah. to do with 249. They've been separate for some time, as you pointed out. Correct. They're assessed separately. No, I, I don't, don't know why you hinge one on the other, basic. It doesn't matter. That, that, that dice has been thrown a long time ago. So now we're just down to, you know, whether we consider this a, a buildable lot. And it has no, by the, by the assessor's records, it has no electrical on it. It has no sewage. It has no plumbing. Basically, once the building comes off there, you know, um, and I suppose I suppose you could say you could keep some of the foundation and work off those foundation edge for for setbacks and like this. There's a whole requirement for for utilities in this, which it doesn't exist, but it will have to exist if the lot gets sold eventually. Well, it has water. Well, there is the electrical there. Yeah. What's it that? Water. What's that? There's water and electrical. That then it must. That going. Well, not. Uh, not what I saw on the assessor's records, unless it came from a, a next door or something. I don't. Uh, know. I, I I don't think so. Um, you know, my I know I think it has a cesspool. Mike, um, I might ask Mike Barrett, who's on, um, if if he could get information on that. If I may, uh, the property is served by a uh, by a separate gas service from the Lakefield um, Municipal Light and Gas Department. I believe there's a separate electrical service um, that I would need to double check. There is a cesspool. There is on the property there has been for quite some time since it was uh, since it was constructed originally but yes it, it, it does have uh, have gas utilities uh, and as, as far as the source of the electric I'm not sure um, I, didn't, I didn't see any over lines going to it like it does to the to 249 there didn't seem to be any lines going to it so I assumed there was an electrical connection between the two buildings but I, I, I you know prove me wrong I guess just, well, the DPW, the DPW gave us a letter on this. We just got it today. And that's the salient point other than the, the usual general comments about these types of projects, that the proposed plan does not include the location of existing water and sewer, or, uh, include the following each. They recommend that uh, project be conditioned to include the following. Each lot must be designed to incorporate separate sewer and water. And I know that's not electric or gas, but um, I think we just want to make sure that they are truly separate in all aspects of the utilities and you know water sewer um, and that can be marketed and sold as a separate buildable lot regardless of pre-existing 
family or, or you know, estate, you know, um, interests, right? Going forward, they're separate. Um, and you want to market them separate, right? Correct. Um, so I agree with Jim. I think, again, to separate 249, there's nothing changing. So really, we're, you're, being, you're asking us to just confirm what exists to clean up any potential issues with the title um, so that it can be sold. Correct? Correct. And with 251, it's potentially changing it, which if this were just somebody changing it, you'd be here for 19050, just modifying a pre-existing potentially. But you're saying there's some question about its pre-existing non-conforming nature. So yeah, there, it, it, instead it, of doing it, that, it, it, you it, wanted to submit for variances to again confirm the existing situation. And even if there were a new structure on here, it would still meet the setbacks. So that's right. Our existing non-conformings. Yeah. Okay. And so, so Brian yeah. or Dave, with variances, we can't put conditions on them, right? Oh, yes, you can. Yes. Findings, we, we can. put conditions on a variance? Oh, yeah. Yes. Not, a, not a finding. We took the 190.50s. We, we wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. So my opinion on both of these properties is that we would restrict the square footage of uh, like on 251 that would restrict the square footage to be no greater than the current square footage for the foundation could change shape if it wanted and would have to meet all setbacks in other words don't come back to us after we do this and and look for a side yard setback variance or something like that and i guess on the other one that there would be uh, uh, no, if any improvements were done to that structure, that they would would not infringe any further on the current setbacks or things that aren't in order. If that makes any sense. In other words, you, we'll let you do this, but you're going to keep a small house, which. By the way, I happen to think that Wakefield needs more of because everybody is doing, you know, you can't find a three bedroom cape anymore uh, without it being torn down and made a five bedroom something. And, you know, keep, keep it as it is and make sure it has separate utilities and everything else. But, you know, it's certainly not more detrimental to the neighborhood. It's been the neighborhood forever. But I would put some conditions on them. You, you're we're approving that what we'd you're be approving. Saying. I'm sorry, Jim. We'd be approving what's on this proposed plan, and that it because variances run forever, right, Brian? So they do. So if somebody came in here, bought the property on the left, and wanted to do something different than what we're approving here, they'd have to come back. Right. We condition not, it that they have to come back. They're yeah. not grandfathered to do anything else but what's proposed on this plan. Right on this plan, right? On this plan. Correct. And on and the only thing I would, would ask for consideration on this would be that what we're proposing is a 29 by 28 foundation. So that we would not increase the square footage of that, but we could make jogs in the foundation as long as it, it met the setback requirements, just because somebody you know we put this on and you know that this you know it might actually be look better if you just don't have like a box so you know, there's not many jobs you could make um but again build, with, build within the box you don't have to have a box but build within the box i mean that's fine jim i mean you know i i, I you know whatever whatever i mean I, I think that we could deal with that i'm just trying to get a little flexibility but if if that's what you you think is appropriate that's fine well, that's what you've come before us with. Well, no, but a con condition can give you a little flexibility on that. Come back. I'm okay. just saying. I'm just saying. No greater square footage, Jim. As long as they meet all the setbacks, right? And the square footage doesn't increase, right? Then I don't care whether it's a square or a rectangle. That's what I just said. Right. No, you no. said build in the box. Well, but that that keeps. Everything, all, all the dimensional pieces basically are still a controlling dimensions basically. 
And if you're a little bit smaller in the box or get a jog built within a box, that's it. You're not going outside the box. You're not going. Yeah. So if you stick out, right. say, you're staying within the square, you're staying within the square footage. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're saying the same thing, just different. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not a lot of room to go outside the box because, Correct. because nope. Nope. we you barely meet the rear setback. We, we barely meet the side setback and we meet the front setback by an extra five feet. So and you're going to go and you're going to go two stories. Yes. Well, as you notice, and I want to point this out because we, we would need to correct this plan because uh, Paul put uh, for 251 in the, in the table, he put uh, stories 2.5 and in the, in the box, he put two stories. So I'm going to need to, whatever the board decides, I'm going to need to have him make a correction on that. So what do you, what do you want it to be? Well, two and a half stories, a half story would be an attic. Um, so you know, I would say two and a half stories would be more appropriate because I think you, you would want to get a pitch on a roof that's going to look, look, look decent. I don't think you want a flat roof and that's usually why houses are, are two and a half uh, stories. And just so, let me read you the definition of half story uh, in our bylaw. Half story, a story which is under a gable, hip, or gambel, ga, uh, gambrel roof where less than one half of the floor area has a height of seven feet or more. Um, so, I mean, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is um, an attic shall not be deemed to be a story if unfinished or not used for human occupancy. You know, I've dealt with a building inspector. So that's a definition of story. Okay. I mean, I think two and a half story would be, would be a safer way to, to designate it. Okay, so you'd update the box and leave the table. Correct. Okay. Any now, board members? Now, another, another point would be, Brian, is I assume that if someone wanted to put a deck off the back of this, it's not part of the building. It's just a deck. Yeah, but they don't have a lot of room because they've got a 25 foot setback requirement and you still have setback requirements for a deck. It can usually encroach by five feet. Right. Right. So, so it becomes a 20 foot. So you'd have a five foot deck. Yeah. Right. Or, a, or as a patio. You know. Patio, there's no requirement. Right. So there's space for something more. Once you once you put a roof on it, then you're screwed. But um, but you could do a, you know a porch. Yeah. A farmers a five foot farmer's porch. With a deck, should I say? Not a porch. Okay, let's stick with what's presented. Let them figure it out later. <laughs> so with the table, I'm going back to the table. The rear foot row. On 251, it says 26.6%. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's a Paul Finocchio typo. Yep. Be, yeah. And then 249, it says 22.0. I think in the drawing, it's actually 22.8. Correct. Okay, so we'll clean up the table. Correct. And the drawing in the case of 251, you're going to label it two and a half stories and leave the table, but update Correct. the Correct. Okay. So just this that'll clean things up. Thing screws everything up, doesn't it? Yeah. Who, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. working within COVID. It screws everything up. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it makes sense to me now that you've talked it through. I was curious when we got the application because it was like nothing changing on that side, what we were really seeking. And, and you know, your explanation helps us understand that, help me. Um, and uh, what you proposed on the other site was going to meet setbacks. I knew there were some existing deficiencies. But again, just explaining it, talking it through. Um, helps me understand um, where we're going here. Um, I, have, I have no concerns. Um, does anyone else have any comments or questions at this time? We did hear from the CONCOM, um, not in their jurisdiction, fire department, um, no objections to the project. Um, I think we heard, I think I mentioned that we heard from the DPW again, just mentioning, making sure that all the utilities and water and sewer and all that are truly separate. Um, sound like Michael's gonna just confirm. Uh, and then the other letter, he actually sent us two letters. Um, 
now that I read them, same comments. So yeah, not, sure why, sent us, not yeah. sure why you sent us two, Gail, but we got two. Um, we did we confirm two applications. Have, it does have a separate electric service, Mr. Chair. We confirmed that. Okay. So it does it, it gets it on its own right now. Yeah. There's, there's two there's a two electric bills that, that serves both properties. Okay. Right. Hey Brian. Does the uh, driveway um, encroach two four for two fifty one? Is that what that dotted line is? Down the middle of the driveway? Is that if you look if you look on Google Maps, yeah it looks like the asphalt was on. Let me get there. Hold on, I'm gonna share this. Uh here, you're sharing. Oh, you were. I will apologize. I keep messing that up. I'm sorry. So let me get over here. It won't when we're done, let's put it that way. It might be a connect. See this walkway that might connect. But See that, car, that that car is parked. It looks like it veers to the left a little bit. And I think that's like by about a foot. Yeah, it looks like it's on it's on two fifty one. Let me get over there. Hold on a second. Let me, get, let me go back to the plan. Can you see the plan again? Yeah. Yeah. You see, I think he's talking, Joe, you're talking about the left hand dotted line. Yes. Of the driveway on 249. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or what. Mm -hmm. oh, no. There's plenty of room to have a driveway there. We have 24 feet. We'll just have to clean no, it. See the, Brian, follow your cursor up to the corner. Yeah. It clips yeah. onto the other right property. there. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's right just there. where a connection was, but we'll clean that up. We start the garage doors in the front and we have 24 feet. Um, yeah. So I, pr I appreciate you pointing that out. I honestly hadn't noticed that. So thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, um, seeing none, hearing none, um, any member of the public wishes to ask a comment? Or, yes, I see a hand being raised. Ms. Thorman, yeah? Hi, yes, I'm a Lauren Thorman and I'm my husband, Patrick Thorman. Um, we're the neighbors at 243, the gray house you okay. saw in the picture. Um, and, and no real concerns um, now after hearing the assurance that 249 won't really be touched. Um, so I guess just sort of want to put forward our um, great desire to keep that um, line where it is between 249 and 243. As you can see, there's tons of you know, tree cover privacy. So our main concern was um, you know, wh whether there was going to be any change to the footprint um, and borders of 249. So very glad to hear that there aren't. Um, and just, you know, sort of re confirming that there are no plans for that 21,000 feet behind 249, right? That would just be sold um, as property with 249, I assume. That's correct. Yes. I think those are really our only concerns, no concern with the um, with the 251 piece, just the piece that touched our property, which um, we now have reassurance really isn't going to change. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, uh, we'll close with the public testimony. So, um, so we need they are separate applications. We need separate uh, votes. Um, and um, start right, with 249. Yep, yeah, I'm just trying to think condition wise, we, we need an updated plan, right, with some corrections. So we, we could note what's been presented to us. We would expect updates. Um, any other conditions potentially before we actually get to the vote? Yes. You have some? Okay. Well, the condition on 249 is that the square footage of the house will not, or I guess that the setbacks, that the square footage of the house and the setbacks will not change as with, to meet what has been presented to us. 
at 249. In other words, if they want to put on a big honking addition somewhere, they've got to come back to us. Right. We're approving what's presented. Any changes, they got to come back. Correct. Because even if it was a non, you know, pre now it's pre-existing non-conforming with the variances, they wanted to alter it. They, they would have they to come back, come maybe back. under a different paragraph. But right. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, Th so that, that, house, but it, that, that house today would have to go before the board anyways. Right, because it'd be yeah. non-conforming, right. everything. Yeah. Even with variances. Correct. Okay. And similar conditions as previously discussed on 251, kind of in the box as presented, so. Oh, oh, yeah, 251 will be that uh, whatever happens there can be two and a half stories and that the, as presented, the square footage of the foundation cannot be any greater than presented, could be less if they desired, and that all the setbacks need to be met. Okay. But I can say those again, maybe clearer. Or just as previously stated, if you want to, but I think I just want to- I can do previously agreement. stated. Yeah. yeah, I got it. And voting members, we have the regular voting members, Dave, Jim, Chip, Amy, Joe, on both of these. Okay, so whenever you're ready, Chip. And the other, the other thing, Dave, I'm gonna do, and just tell me if it makes sense, I'm gonna do it per the, per the table as presented as compared to go through each one of the variances each one of the okay. setbacks. Or you could right. note, the, note the plan as dated and we're expecting an update to clean up Correct. some aspects on the table. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. So I could just add I one thing. If, I, if I could just have one thing on that. Yeah, start. maybe. Well, <laughs> both lots need lot width relief because lot width goes with frontage. And that's uh, in your, that's in your application, I believe. It is in the application. And then, uh, right. and then, um, lot uh, two hundred and forty-nine needs uh, shape relief. So from from one hundred and thirty, that's in the application also. Does it need relief? It's a pre-existing condition. Well, with, with the variances, I, I I really would respectfully request that because we're getting other variances, and we, we want to, as the neighbor said, we want to maintain that lot the way it is. So uh, it gives a good buffer to everybody, and um, I would request that that relief. Okay. Hold on. I think my packet is stapled. The front page is 249. The second page is 251. Let me see. Uh, oh, there's a typo on that. Yeah. A lot of typos on this app on this project. <laughs> that tech keep God staff isn't as good as your Wakefield no. staff. Um, <laughs> all right. I move that we grant the variance for 249 Nahant Street Realty Trust under Article 10, Section 190-66, Table 2 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, that includes lot frontage, lot width, side yard setback, rear yard setback, and shape based on the table that was presented to us on Paul from, on PJF's associates site plan dated August 6th or 8th, 8th, 2020. Eight. Eight. Is that your motion? Uh, with the condition as previously stated. Second. That's now my motion. Okay. And seconded any discussion on that motion. Okay, regular voting members, Chip? Yes. Jim? Yes. Amy? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I am a yes, so that vote is unanimous. I move that we grant Studio Realty Trust a variance under article, the variance is requested under Article 10, 190 66. Table two of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, including lot frontage, lot width, and lot area. 
um, with the condition as previously stated and the plans as previous plans and tables previously stated. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Okay, regular voting members, Chip. Well, I would have one other condition, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Okay. That all utilities be separate to that lot. Okay. And not like connected. Okay, sound like most of As requested by the DPW, all utilities need to be just referring to the DPW letter. Okay. You want me to second that amendment? Yes, please. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the amended motion with that condition? Okay, same voting member, Chip? Aye. Jim? Aye. Amy? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I vote yes as well. So that too is unanimous. Okay. Grant is granted. Go forth and market properties, Michael. Mr. Chairman, if I may, thank you for your thank you for your consideration. Uh, just a question for Mr. Tabo, so I'm clear. Uh, right now, you've approved a 812 uh, square foot uh, foundation on on for Studio Realty Trust. The restriction would be strictly limited to these, that 812 square feet of living space on the first floor. That wouldn't include someone finishing a basement or increasing square footage uh, that way. Square that footage way? of the foundation. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, members of the board. All right. Brian, are you on any of the other matters we have tonight? Let's take right in this. Right, yes, right in that order. Yep. All right. So, all right. So we had a few listed on the agenda. Um, it was posted. So 27 and 37 Water Street, we heard from uh, their attorney, Michael McCarthy, earlier today that um, they were not ready to proceed. They're still working on those updated plans that, um, that as discussed at our site meeting on August 17th, I believe it was. Um, so that we'll hear at our next hearing. So the next other matter in order is Brian Melanson Construction 69th Boundary Street, modification of courtyard materials and colors. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Okay. So Tim Sullivan and Eric Chrisman are here from Siva Construction. And is Tim? Okay, and Eric? Tim Sullivan is here. Great. Hi, Tim. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. And Eric. Great. So we were before you last time and, and, and what we um, wanted to show, let me share this screen. Um, you know, with me. Okay, so this is this is an elevation of, of the courtyard. So um, Tim is gonna Tim is gonna help out on this. I, I just want to give you a basic background of, of what has driven uh, the request for this, what we deem to be a minor modification. Um, the, the materials that were spec'd on this project for the decks and the trim, uh, the posts on the deck, the skirts, were, um, were uh, basically, um, um, what's the material, Tim? Uh, uh, it's PVC. P yeah, thank you, PVC material that was spec'd. And that's, and that's what they installed and put up. Um, the problem arose when they went to paint it, the colors, if you uh, might remember the, I'm going to bring up another, just bear with me, I want to show you, so that's what we're proposing and it's always helpful to see what we're, what was approved. <clears throat> Hang on a sec. Okay. Okay, can you see that? Can you blow that up a little bit, Brian? I can. Spun on me. 
<laughs> right? So the difference is it has the, the, uh, the dock posts, it has the green skirts on the deck. Um, and what drove this is the PVC was installed per plan. When they went to paint, they discovered that the PVC material cannot hold the paint. Uh, it's not designed and it's gonna cause a problem in the future. Um, so um, they have now found another material, which Tim is gonna talk to you about for the rest of the building uh, that they will be able to, so the size of the building, the face foundry, uh, and, the, and the other, you know, more prominent uh, areas of the building. They, 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 part of this request is to change the material from PVC to a different material that will allow the, the paint to proper, properly adhere to it. Um, to, to their credit, to uh, Seaver's credit, um, if the board takes the position, hey, you know, we want that to be the green, um, they can do that. It can be done. It's going to be an expensive thing to do, but they're ready, willing, and able to do it. They would have to rip everything off the building uh, and, and put the new approved material up and then paint it. Um, I think Tim told me that that cost is somewhere about $15,000 worth of work to do it. Um, it's just going to slow the project down. Um, quite honestly, they, they actually think that this difference in color in the courtyard gives it somewhat of a nice contrast uh, to the building anyways. And it's not like it's in, it's in conflict with what's gonna go on on the front of the building. It's kind of in its own little vacuum in this, in this courtyard area in the back. Um, the rails will still be black, would still be black. Um, it's really just a change in the colors of the posts um, in the skirts of the deck. Um, Tim, do you have any, anything to add to that? No, Brian, as it relates to the courtyard, just specifically, I think you explained everything that needs to be understood. Tim, can you talk maybe for the board a little bit about the material um, and the issue with the PVC and what you plan on doing on the other parts of the building to avoid that and what you're requesting to do? Sure. Well, PVC, as we've come to learn, has limitations when you paint it uh, certain dark colors. And in the paint industry, there's something called a light reflective value or LRV. And everything is scaled from zero to a hundred, zero being black and a hundred being pure white. And the green colors uh, and the black, well, there's black color for the post, uh, which would have been a zero. The green would have been a um, eight, uh, 17 approximately. And you're not supposed to paint PVC anything less than a 55. So we looked at all the colors above 55, which are compatible with the warranty to paint PVC, and nothing comes close to any of the dark colors that uh, were proposed. So as Brian explained, the option is to either leave the interior courtyard balconies uh, white, and there are 15 of those, and they're installed with the PVC, and then on the outside of the building, we're proposing to use a product made by a manufacturer called Boral, B-O-R-A-L. And the specific product is called True Exterior. And that's a uh, poly, polymer ash, it's polymer fly ash resin composite uh, material. Um, comes in all the same shapes uh, and board widths as, you know, AZAC or P any PVC product would and um, has smooth face on it um, and can take any dark color up to black because the material will not swell or expand in the heat like PVC will. Uh, so in order to achieve the original intent all the way around the other two sides of the building, we're asking for the change from PVC to Boral True Exterior. And the white on the back, again, white on the back, green. will still look fine unfinished, like the paint wasn't going to cover up any branding, markings, anything. It's completely, it looks clean. It's, it's a clean white look. I mean, we, we would be puttying nail holes and you know, doing white touch up, but that would be it. Okay. I, I guess I could see 
um, the inner court area having white and being a different element, but I would want to see the, like in this particular picture that's up, is the end of the building, the end of the primary building, not the courtyard area, being a, a green or being uh, the rest, like the rest of the building, but just the inner court area basically being different. Um, it, it, can be, it can be that way and accent that courtyard a little bit more. Uh, yeah, Brian, if you can go back to that Western exposure to respond to Jim's question. Jim, within the courtyard, there are 15 balconies, but once you get to the rest of the West Wing of the building, there are no balconies back there until you reach the far corners of the building. Right. right. And yeah, you have the parking areas on, on the north and south sides of the building and then Foundry Street on the other side. And so those three other elevations, north, south, and east, uh, that's where the green and black would start. And there's, you know, 80, 80 or 90 feet worth of separation between uh, the edges of the courtyard and the beginning of any of those other three sides. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it could, for me, it could go either way, basically. I, I don't have, in this particular case, having spent most of the time on the, on the rest of the building, basically, and in, in, in uh, modifications, basically, we made it that way back when is I don't have any difficulty with seeing this area a little bit different than the rest. And the different material, again, doesn't offer the look. It's the same texture, grain, anything yes. like that. It's, it's gonna look pretty much the same. And then get- it's, it's gonna look exactly the way it was intended with the other- Jim, are you even familiar with this new material that they're suggesting? No, I'm not. It's but the new AZAC. Yeah, well, it's the next generation. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't move. It's a composite. It can take paint better. Everybody's using it on trim now with hardy plank and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. it's the new trim board of the 2020 world. It came out about, what guys, maybe five years ago and is now just starting to get readily used. I don't have the exact dates on when it came into. No, uh, but I mean, when have you seen it on on project? Uh, first time I've seen it on uh, project having to face this dark color issue. You know, normally yeah. you can just work with cellular PVC or other products. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't move. It doesn't shift. It's good stuff. Yeah, I've yeah. I mean, it's, it's dimensionally they call it dimensionally stable. It's more yeah. expensive than any of the other PVC options that I'm we sure have that we feel the expense is well worth the you know the uh it's well worth the expense to get the product that won't swell or buckle you know as it would if it were yeah. pvc well that's why we you know that's why we push a lot of times basic and is exact trim because it's it's more stable and uh, basically makes sense and if this is a sort of equal equal product product i don't have any issue with it quite frankly Stephen. I, Jim, I'd even call it a step up. Okay. And, well, yeah, it gives you a little more option, doesn't it? You can paint right. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it says right here where we highlighted products are dimensionally stable, which promotes long lasting paint adhesion, even with dark colors. Yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with the product. It's a good product. Oh. Okay. Any other comments from board members? Any concerns that the proposed changes would not be considered minor modifications to our approved plans? Okay. I do you need a, do we need to vote or can we yeah. just? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I move that, that this is, should be considered a minor modification as presented this evening. Moving, changing the material from AZAC to, and I don't even know the name of the stuff. It's, uh, it's from PVC quantity. from PVC to Boral True Exterior. To, yeah, yep, True Exterior. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, Brian, um, normally for mod modifications, again, we need a final set of drawings. So whatever site plan drawings or renderings show this or listed a materials booklet, right? 
we'll yeah, need something, so, something so, for the record that shows yeah. that this is what we approved and it would accompany any modification letter and be, become part of the record so that we'll know what was actually built. Yeah, so, and that's a good point. So that, that brings me to our next uh, thing on that, that, I, that um, we, we would like uh, to sit down with Jim McBain um, because we've made some modifications on this project as we've gone along and we talked about the fact that we wanted to document them all and now's the time to do that. And um, um, we, we would like to work with Jim to do that with a, with a modification set, including everything that's been done along the way uh, so that this project is well documented because I don't think it's extremely well documented at this point. Um, because we, we're only we're only talking up when we talk about this we're only talking about zoning issues not building issues yes correct okay. yeah yeah because we made yep. some modifications back in uh, right. December Jim um, that we, we really want to document this Dave and and, and I want to spend some time with Jim and, and make sure that the file is reflective of what's what's been approved okay I'm fine with as long as Jim is <laughs> yeah, I'm fine um, okay well, we're still under discussion for the motion. So, Jim, do you have any discussion yeah. on the motion? Yeah, I do. Um, we haven't clarified the inside color. In, in, <coughs> Chip's, in Chip's recommendation, basically, he was just basically uh, given approval for this material. But um, the other part of that request, basically, is not to change the, um, not to change the material inside the uh, um, whatever. Oh, yeah. Courtyard. Thank you. Um, the courtyard, basically, leave it as it leave it as it is. It will be unpainted. Um, Azac. Unpainted PVC. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I may have missed it. Chip. It, you you did cover both fronts. I thought you did, but if you missed it, then we should have a second on the amended motion that the modifications are twofold, the, leaving these as as is as white and changing material on the other ones. I don't think I did do that, so it should. You're, you got it now, Amy. Second on the amended motion. Thank you. Any discussion on the amendment from the amended motion? Okay. Same voting members. Uh, Chip. Yes. Jim. Yes. Amy. Yes. Joe. Yes. And I. Oh yeah. So. Okay. So we'll look for a follow up. Again, we got to file the modification, right? So we'll get a letter, Brian, but um, then a set of plans that reflect the few changes that have become. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to work on Jim with all of it going back. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. And one, uh, no, just a, uh, one other thing on this. Um, we're just trying to kind of close some things out. Um, the roof screening, um, the roof equipment is up. And, and I don't know if, if, um, if the board members have yet had an opportunity to look at that. Um, because we, we, we had, we had mock-up stuff up there, but now the actual roof equi equipment is all installed. So we would like you to take a look at that to see um, if we're going to have to do screening or not. Because now do you want the discussion tonight or do you want us to look, <laughs> I mean, have look at it? Well, I think some members have looked at it. Um, and I might, um, yes, it needs screening. Oh, you've looked at it? Yep. Yeah, we looked at the. I looked at the mock-up, but I haven't seen the actual. And I remember I, to see it, I had to go like over to Dunkin' Donuts on North Ave. But you know, new new tenants at Harvard Mills might might get a different view. But well, I mean, and they won't. Being, uh, the screening won't help it. But just we don't know what the we don't know what's going to come on the road, right? Amy may allow a seventeen-story building down there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good luck with that. You know, <laughs> you know, so I, I just think without knowing what the future is, they should screen it. I, 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 I don't agree. I mean, I, I've looked at it, and the closest I can get to actually see something is on Main Street, looking way, and I'd have to have a set of binoculars. I can just barely see it with my eyes. Is right, on, so go to the, the, go the go four stories across the street. I have, I have to go be to the fourth story across the street when the new building gets built. Uh, yeah, right. I no, I, I, you know, the trouble with screening is it becomes a bigger object in a lot of ways, and you still haven't got a cornice work up at this point, and I can just barely see it from the field on the on Main Street, basically. I'm not worried about the street, Jim. 
I'm worried about the future buildings all right. around this thing. This, this, there's only one building that's going to be higher than this thing. It's already going up. Not going to be. What, what about the one that's even and you're looking at it and all you've got is that you're not looking at it from the right perspective, in my opinion. Well, you're looking at it from the street. Look at it from another four story building on the top floor. I'm not renting a helicopter. No, I know. So. You want us to get it? Okay. We don't know what's coming. Screen it. So, can you get us a can you get us a picture or a rendering of what the roof looks like? Because none of us can get up that high, just to see it. We can talk about this at the next meeting, maybe. And we we'll, between now and then, we'll have a chance to view it live. Yeah. Again. And, yeah, and that's and fine. Or we could get a drone. Or, we could do a drone. Um, yeah. if you want. Or no, just a photograph. Somebody go up there and take a picture or something. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Brian, yeah. what you, what you can do is. Go up and in, in up to the top floor or the roof of the building next door that's already under construction. Get some photographs from there. That's that's already higher than you are on this one. What the Harvard Mills? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that because that's what Chip's talking about. Somebody else being at at that kind of height. Maybe. Yeah, that either to the left, to the right, across the street. Okay, so without telling you how to do it, can we just get a few pictures? Yeah, we can. Yep. And then we'll we'll try yep. try to get out there. I haven't seen the actual mock-up. Yeah. So, and, and the and the last thing the last thing on this real quick is um, is there a need to keep the mock-up panel up anymore? Because all the materials are, are pretty much on the building. Not and we need to and we need to pave the parking lot, and the mock-up sits on the footprint of the parking lot. We're trying to finish all the utilities under under the parking lot. And How about move the mock the to your big, over to the other street, over to your other site? Well, I mean, do we need it? When do we normally take them down? I mean, do we still need it? Um, I, I, my personal Just opinion. Jim wants to reference something. <laughs> I got. I have photographs. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, it can come down as as long as Amy agrees. I'm fine with it coming down. Okay. Green light on that. Okay. Anything else, Brian? Thanks. Nope, that's it. Real quick? Okay. Nope, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the courtesy. Thank you, members of the board. All right. Thank you. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, okay, next up, the uh, next other matter, Wakefield Investments, Inc., 301 North F. Review some cut sheets. Brian, more sharing. Sharing is caring. Thank Ryan's you. On mute. No. Brian, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Here we I go. Said, I, 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 I apologize. I have a lot of, um, I submitted a lot of cut sheets. I'm going to bring up the main uh, set of plans. And then if you want to see anything else specific, I can do that. If that's okay with you. That's fine. Um, we all got them in advance and we appreciate that as, as always. Jeff Shelsey is here. Who's the, who's the owner. Right. Um, but I think we really, Spect all the stuff that uh, the board had requested and and you know the main thing you wanted to see you wanted to see all elevation so this is the front elevation Let me just get there's the front side. other side and then even the rear of the building on the other side. Brian, how did we leave this? Didn't we approve it and then you just had to provide cut sheets? Yeah, I think I think you well, I know you approved that it would be a minor modification. 
and then you wanted to see the cut sheets. Um, so, and I, and I think, um, you know, and also the, the, we set, gave some detail on the retractable awning, that it is retractable. Um, you know, I, I think. Uh, well, let me, so let me go through the list, all right? Because I've looked at all the material. This can be quick or pain, painful, one or the other. The cornice form and the color is okay, in my opinion, and it was submitted. The awning retractable mechanisms, okay. The front door design is okay. The four elevations that you just showed are okay. The windows are okay. The lamp's okay. The entry door's okay. So as far as I'm concerned, basically, the material sent to us for minor mod is fine. But that's right. It. I would agree. I would. I agree with Jim, and I don't think we need to rehash the whole discussion. Just going back to our minutes. Yep, that is how we left it per the minutes of the last meeting. We did approve it with the condition, if you will, that you come back with cut sheets and you've done that. So any other concerns from board members? Okay. Thanks for the summary, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Brian, okay, thank you. we're good. I'll do a modification letter, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, board. All right. Okay, the next item on the agenda was to be uh, Kerwick LLC at Fort Wakefield Ave. It is our understanding, Brian. Um, we're not gonna move forward with that proposed modification. They have no modifications. Okay, so that, that one's um, off the table. Um, any other matters that were not considered when the agenda was published? I know we have a couple other regular agenda topics, but any other matters? Gail, anything that has come up since then or Brian or nope. anyone else? Okay, clerk of board comments. So. I have a question about, since I missed the site visit, what ended up happening? Are they gonna screen the stuff on top of 28 or 27 Water Street? Am I opening a can of worms here? Are they gonna screen? <laughs> the roof, the, all the mechanicals up there? That the purpose of the site visit was to go through the parking and landscaping changes okay. that they were proposing. Okay. And, and the minutes that were submitted um, that uh, we put together and were submitted, Gail sent them with the other minutes, um, summarize kind of what we went through. They, they are gonna come back with updated parking plans to show okay. reality. Um, they just weren't prepared to do that tonight. And, they're gonna, and they sent us an updated landscape plan that Chip reviewed and I think um, was fine with, but we need to see those updated plans. We did not talk about the roof, right, Jim? Uh -huh. No, we did not. And I think that, I think we'd have to go back through the meeting minutes, but I think we had given them after we knew that some of the antennas were coming off and other stuff up there. I th we might have given them dispensation to not spend the money up there. I don't know. I'd have to that go was back. what I was kind of remembering, but I couldn't, I wasn't sure about it. But when I'm driving by it, it there's a lot of stuff up there. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's based on the, it's based on their contract time, basically them. So okay. there's already one coming off. There's, uh, I think there's four up, four companies or three companies up there. So um, you know, I th we had some discussion maybe a year ago or nine months ago on this whole matter. <clears throat> it didn't come up at the August hearing or the follow-up. No, 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 no. That was strictly on parking. It strictly started with parking and then and went into landscaping and the like. So we okay. have. We have landscape, revised landscape drawings basically before us, but what we don't have is a clean engineered layout with a stamp on it, plus a note basically from the fire department, they were all right with the lane uh, with accessing the site basically after all these changes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that what they're trying to do is negotiate a deal with a civil engineer to lay the damn thing out, uh, plus survey it so they know what the hell was built. Okay. That's why we don't see it at this moment. Okay. Hopefully we'll see it in two weeks. 
Yeah. Um, anything else? No. Tim, anything from you or other board members? No, nothing for me. Okay. So we have two sets of minutes to approve, both our regular hearing on the 22nd of August, as well as the, I'm, I'm the 12th, I'm sorry, I misread that. And then the follow-up yeah. site visit on the 17th. I move that we approve the 12th uh, minutes as written. Can I second that even though I still have to catch up on them? I'm not gonna vote on it, but can I second um, it? No, Maybe. why don't we, somebody else second it. Yeah. yeah, I can. Thank you, Jim. Any discussion on those minutes? All right, um, so regular voting members who were here, Chip? Yes. Jim? Yes. Joe? Yes. Mike? Mike, we gotta get your audio taken care of. <laughs> he's, he's freeze frames. Oh my God, it's wicked funny. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to get Mike an upgrade. Gail, we need an appropriation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, How does he work from home? Yeah. I think he goes in. So assuming you're raising your hand, Mike, yes, good, thumbs up. Um, Check his head. There okay. he goes. Yep. So that's approved next, Jim. Yep. <laughs> Is it that, what are we approving this? The August 17th, the site 17th. visit. There was a second set of minutes. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't remember that. Uh, I move that we approve the minutes for the August 17th site visit. Yeah. Second. Good. Thank you. Any discussion? Can you hear me? Uh, Chip? Yes. Jim? Yes. Joe? Yes. Mike? <laughs> right. Mike thumbs up. Okay. And Jay. Okay. Hold on a second. I go in. So, um, 598 North. Sorry, I should have done this under other matters. I, I had it written down at the end. Um, do we have to write a letter, Gail, to the building inspector? Good, yes. Yeah, okay. we're about to give it out. They just, they have everything um, done. The, yeah, there was an elevator problem. They got that fixed. All the affidavits are in, the inspections, fire is done. Um, he came in today with the rest of the paperwork. So we're ready, yeah. Just to put okay. in the that you're all set. Okay, because then what we noted during our visit was that back area wasn't landscaped, right? So we said put in gravel. I drove mm -hmm. by recently, they did that. And then fence is back ordered. Um, and we've gotten a letter from Peter Sandoris stating his yes. we're from, from the owner, Jonathan Maine, but Peter Sandoris. Yes, yes, yes. So I think if yes. we just refer to that memo um, um, and say, you know, they've met the conditions of our board subject to getting this fence, which is back ordered per memo, we're good, right? That's so I'll, I'll offer yep. that letter and that closes that off. Um, and then. The only other thing I noticed is again our new mailbox. There was some recent communications about 590 North uh, Main Street, the gas station, and the noise. And I know Brian, who looks like he's now preoccupied. I, I know they're working it, so I, I just don't think it's fully resolved. But other parties in town, I think Steve Mayo's involved. And yeah, there was a meeting um, when I was on vacation last week with um, Steve and Ben, the new building um, inspector, and all the neighbors. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. We'll look for some sort of update just that there's closure there. We want to know that, again, just whatever needed to happen to help mitigate the situation has happened. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's all I had. So anything else, board members? Going once, going twice? No. Brian, we need to see your new yeah. dog. I have, I have one thing, Mr. Chairman, I, I, if I may. I just got a call from Mr. Finocchio. He's got one other correction on that plan. The, the, the 249 lot doesn't change but the calculation is like 17,000 square feet he just he put the wrong number on that plan but the lot doesn't change so that's going to get corrected on the table too and all right so lot, be what is it lot, lot area yeah the lot the lot area is 17,000 and change it always was it hasn't changed he just put the wrong number on the plan you know, what does it say 21,000 or something there's 21 i don't know you know and, and i wouldn't know that but he, I, I had emailed him and I said, you need to make these changes. And he, he, he contacted me back. He said, I got to fix the area. He said, the total lot area with all the lots is 21,000 and change. And he said, I, I made a mistake when I put that down. Boy, did he take his 
eye off the ball on this one. <laughs> oh my, well, yeah. I take blame for the tables. I should have seen those. That I would never know the area. I mean, you know, no. I, mean, well, I, I think okay. I think he's wearing his mask over his face. Yeah. Cold face. Yeah. Amy, you want to see my dog? I do, yeah. Uh, yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> All right. I move that we adjourn. I want to leave. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> um, all in favor, Chip? Uh, <laughs> Jim? Yes. Joe? My assistant. My, that's, a, that's one, Amy. That's My, a friggin' teddy bear. Yeah. I vote to adjourn. <laughs> all right. That's my other one. Uh, oh, look at the face on him. You know, this is going on CAT. You know yes. that. Okay. You know what? It's COVID. We can all have a little fun. Yeah. Dogs make everyone happy. That's right. Yeah. Have think a good night. Thank you, guys. If you, right. glass, good night. if you, if you put you. your glasses on a dog, he'd look just like you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, have a good night. Thank you very much. All right. Meeting yeah. adjourned. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys.